Saturday or Friday, I'm not sure which. I was kind of dozing off because the TV stays on all night. If it's quiet, you notice I go to sleep over here. Doesn't take long. So I woke up to a, a bulldog type uh, drill sergeant hollering and screaming. And he was marching up and down the dormitory of the prison and he said, if you sit on the bed with dirty pants, you go in the box. And if you do this, you go in the box. And if you do this, you go in the box. And all Paul Newman is sitting down in the bed. And he's just looking up at him and smiling. He said, you got any problem with that? No, sir. No, sir. Well, you know, Paul Newman never gave up. And finally, they took him in front of the boss man in one of those prisons down there in I don't know, Alabama, Louisiana. And she said, what we have here is a failure to communicate. Now, I want to tell you something. I know it's not me because every time I find something out, I bring it to you. But what we do have is something the grand jury said is a failure to communicate. And in a failure to communicate, it means that you do what you want to do. And it's time for y'all to take a lead in doing the suggestions of the grand jury, and that is Mr. Bussey needs to go, Miss Fleming needs to go. Miss Fleming, the last one she hired, she said she replaced by somebody. Is the gal that was up here said she's not gonna be bullied and not gonna be harassed and all this stuff. She introduced herself. And she lives in Jonesboro. She's still owner of a smoke shop, okay? vapors and all that stuff. So she's got a good job because she's trying to kill them and then she can embalm them. So she's still over there in Jonesboro, but she comes over here every now and then. Yes, that, that was out of order when you said uh, you inferred that this uh, lady was trying to kill. You can't say that, don't you? Okay. Just keep going. Well, don't she ha she, ha she owns a business that is vaping. Okay, then all just right. keep going. Okay. okay. But when some of these people come up here and tell me that I'm out of order, I wish you'd do that to them, too. Okay. I'll okay. try to be consistent. All right. Now, here she is earning $900 to come over here. The coroner's still not doing her job, even after the judge said to do it. Somebody here, as a matter of fact, it was me that brought the attention that she bypassed human resources. Forget about it. I run my own job. So she hired him. And she hired, and then I asked for the application, and guess what? A couple months later, they said, come over here and fill it out, but we don't have one for you. So three months later, or two months, she goes up and fills one out. Gas. Mm -hmm. Listen to this crazy gas mileage. Mr. Pierce, you've exceeded your time. <coughs> you've exceeded. I gave you a few more minutes. You've exceeded. I'm out? Yeah, you've exceeded no. your three minutes. Yes, sir. One day I'm going to get on the agenda and give you all half an hour. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Thank you so much, Mr. Pierce. We appreciate your contribution to county government. Um, clerk, I believe that's all of our comments this morning. Uh, Board of Commissioners, we have a pretty robust meeting this morning. And I said that I guess they wanted my administration, and I guess that has carried over. But it, it proves that we are doing some things and getting some things done. 
But um, if you, Board of Commissioners, just take a peek at the margin, the minutes, approval of the minutes, and you'll take a peek at those, and then we'll be prepared to approve accordingly tomorrow. And then also your approval of expenses, please make sure that you uh, review your expenses, and we will be uh, available to you, so we will move forward to approve tomorrow. Uh, Vice Chair, you look like you had something to say. Okay. I'm just skipping around a little bit because we have to expedite a little bit. I've been uh, informed that uh, our Executive Director of uh, Development Authority needs to leave, and I'm going to bring him up to the top just before the presentation, so I'll allow you to move up. Chris Pomfrey, if you could come forward in yours. Your tab is tab number 13. Number 13 is authorization to approve the intergovernmental agreement for Project Rambo and authorize the chairman to sign all related documents pending final legal review. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, thank you all for um, the flexibility uh, in today. Um, we do have our uh, GEA State Association luncheon uh, that is today. And that's when we pass off. I'll be chair next year, so we'll be passing off the gavel today, so I have to head down for that. Very good. So, um, but nonetheless, um, um, we have work to do, and that work is in relation to Project Ramble. Uh, Project Ramble um, is an existing industry uh, that we that we have in our community. Um, we are under confidentiality confidentiality um, with that um, with that entity today. Um, what we have before you is the approval of an, of an IGA intergovernmental agreement um, for Project Ramble as they consider a more long term commitment and investment uh, into Douglas County. Um, that long-term commitment would include an, an additional $600 million um, investment kind of initially um, moving forward, um, new jobs um, that are paying well above our county average wage. Um, when we did our agreement with them before, um, we talked about 25 new jobs being on site. They now have 350 uh, on site, and they will be increasing that, uh, that job number as well. This is an investment um, that would ensure, as I mentioned, kind of a long-term viability, a long-term play uh, in our community. Uh, they have been wonderful community partners uh, for us here in the community. Um, we actually had the opportunity to take a visit uh, to their, their HQ um, with uh, Madam Chair, our Superintendent North, uh, our, our, one of our board members, uh, Mr. Mike Stevens, and our Chamber President, <coughs> to really get a full-on understanding of, of, of how important and essential this operation is to their overall operations um, and, and how with that, is, that essentiality and the challenges that they face here locally, how can we ensure that they stay here and continue to invest here uh, in, in our community. So we do have an existing agreement uh, in place uh, with the operation today. Uh, we would look to um, amend that with a new agreement that would extend it um, another 10 years beyond on the termination of the existing agreement. Um, points here. So with with the with this new newly negotiated agreement, um, it would increase um, the taxes that are currently being paid today. Normally, we're looking to figure out how can we um, give a bigger break. So we're not giving a bigger break. Um, we are actually um, getting more out of this. Um, on an annual basis and will continue to increase the amount that we're getting um, out of the project. So it's it's more of a long-term, longer-term <coughs> commitment, but actually a, a greater benefit from a property tax standpoint to us. That is to us as a board for the county and to the school system. Um, and so they were very important, you know, as we kind of work through this to engage uh, the superintendent in the process as well. He was going to try and be here. We're having, there he is. <laughs> um, so thank you for, for coming here as well. Uh, but this, this is something that we believe is truly an asset to the community. It has truly put a gold, the gold standard for Douglas County so that we continue to recruit um, in this space. Um, and, and we hope to continue that process going forward. Our plan um, is to have the IGA approved, um, and then we will go through the closing, and then what we will do is have an announcement in the first quarter, the very early part of the first quarter, that will also include some other other benefits to come along with this more long-term agreement. Give me one second. So, so with that, um, we will start out um, 
uh, with a new annual pilot payment that, that's roughly 20% of taxes normally do, which today we're um, getting less than that, uh, starting out at 1.5 million a year, and then increasing over that period of time to 3.3 million dollars a year. And that is just for this one operation. This, this entity also has existing other existing operations in the community that came about after um, we did our, um, uh, our initial, our current agreement. And those operations are 100% taxable, so they are not a part of any type of property tax abatement plan or anything like that. That means today they are currently paying roughly $5 million a year. Um, in property taxes in our community. And now what we're saying is we're increasing <coughs> those property taxes to be coming into the community for the long-term future. Uh, and that, Madam Chair, I believe covers the majority of that. I think I've, sat, I've had the opportunity to sit down with most, most of you and talk through all of the, the other benefits that are coming along with this. Um, but once again, um, we're excited to be here and here to answer the questions that you may have. Thank you so much, uh, Any questions from the board? Vice Chairman Robson. Yeah, I'll, I'll be brief. I, I recognize the confidentiality, but first, I, again, in addition to being one of the top um, executive directors in the nation, to now be state um, chair, incoming chairs is commendable. And again, it, it represents Douglas County quite well. Uh, that sincere, Chris, you bring a lot of value to this county. Um, and I recognize your office, as, as small as it is, it brings tremendous value. And with that digest, what we just went through during that budget cycle, a lot of it had to do with you and with you as far as offsetting regarding residential. So appreciate it. <coughs> Thank you very much. All right, real quick. Um, new project, um, uh, new initiative in essence, um, an enhancement to current operations. Um, it's effective January 1st. Did I yeah, hear that so right? The, the, it would go into effect January 1st. The payments, whenever taxes are paid, I think that's up to Okay, so but effective January, but nevertheless, um, all right, so, and you did you did quote a number, right? Yes, sir. All right, so, and so, um, this is straight, what, what is the term? Is that disclosable? How long? Uh, 15 years. Okay, 15 years. All right, very good. So this is long term, so they're getting more into the as opposed to, so this extends beyond our, our current policy. And the reason I have to say that, because our current policy is what, 10 years. Yeah. And so we're going to, what's being asked of the Board of Commissioners is to extend that beyond that, which it, it can't do. We, we, we have that power. Um, so uh, 1.5, 15 years, okay, long-term commitment, it has existing operation. Um, um, obviously, there's some ancillary benefits that you're going to get into. The school board, that's really my question, is they're on board with this? Is that what I heard? Can the superintendent speak to it, or is he just here for support, or is he here to help? More than, more than happy to speak. Okay. <laughs> Mr. Superintendent, welcome. Thank you. <coughs> welcome, sir. To the board, we are excited about the partnership. Uh, we thank the board and we thank uh, Chris and his team for allowing us to sit at the table. We feel like that this is not only a benefit to the company but to the Douglas County school system as well. So the board, uh, we are very supportive uh, based upon the current structure of this arrangement. Yes, sir. All right, that's all we need. I don't Thank you. All right, I'm going to yield let my colleagues. Okay. <coughs> Any other questions on the board? And then I have a uh, attorney. Do you mind if he? Okay, okay. attorney. Mm -hmm. No, 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 because it may be, you may answer some of my questions. Of course, we, we need to, one thing that's new in this besides the term is the waiver of permitting fees, which we haven't done in the past. And I thought Chris could address that or Joe, um, but that's in here. So I'll, just from a legal standpoint, people do this across the state. I will say there is some legal skepticism about whether that's appropriate or not. But having said that, it is done elsewhere. So we have two versions of this, one without the permitting waiver and one with the permitting waiver. I just think the board needs to address that, and Chris or Joe. I noticed that the superintendent had his all green colors all the day. <laughs> <laughs> but he left his black armband off of his suit. I'm not sure exactly what that was about. He sold me to remind Holden what he did to him. He died on Joe's back. 
Actually, the waiver of permit fees for, was for when Ramble <coughs> built the prior structure and permit fees were waived then. So when <coughs> Ron Council and I got together and fashioned the new IGA for the period of time you've heard described, it simply was repeated. It was a waiver of fees that actually occurred before. There's going to be new, no new underground construction, so it shouldn't be an issue anyway. So do, does the language need to stay in or stay out regarding permitting? Uh, I don't think we've waived them before. I believe it was. It was in the original agreement. But I spoke with the bond lawyer. He's talking with the company officials, and I'll get back with you about that between now and this afternoon. We just wanted to point that out. I'm of the impression we have it, but having said that, if Joe may be correct, we just want y'all aware of it so that you know what you're voting on. Okay. Uh, most of them don't have that in there. Thank you very much. Commissioner Mitchell? Yes. Yeah, I, Superintendent, you would you step back to the podium if you would, please, sir. <laughs> you, you spoke about some benefits to the school system, school board, or whatever, and, and I'm assuming you're speaking on behalf of the school board that they are all in support of this particular project and this particular layout, which will affect you guys, you know, royally. Uh, yes, sir. Okay. Um, the, when, when I speak of benefits, um, only those that you can share. I mean, you know, the confidentiality and all that good stuff, I don't want to kind of you know, get too far into the week. But it, it would be hard for me to uh, explicitly go into the benefits okay. without demonstrating who the company is. Got it, got it, okay. Um, but here's what I can share with you. Okay. If they remain status quo, mm -hmm. we would still continue to benefit mm -hmm. based upon the model that we use for other companies. Mm -hmm. And so this company is a 100% win uh, for the Davis County School System. Uh, and I just, without sharing, <coughs> I couldn't go to it. Yes, sir. It is. It's, it's a hundred percent. In addition to the increase, mm -hmm. uh, that's just going to make it even a larger win mm -hmm. for um, us. As a, if it was a different company and their model, mm -hmm. uh, it would be a little bit more difficult for us, and we would probably still support it because it creates jobs and benefits for the county. Mm -hmm. But this one is an easy one for us, just because of the company's <coughs> model. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. And, and, and Chris, uh, on to you with this probably last question. I know you mentioned like a 1.5 type of an increase, and I think you and I had a conversation about how carved in stone are we with this whole makeup versus um, negotiable, how, how negotiable uh, this whole concept is, or is that a sidebar conversation that you would rather have with the board um, as opposed to publicly? Yeah. Yeah, so it, it's it's uh, the, the process we went through, we went back and forth on trying to get to kind of what, what is the beginning and the end look like mm -hmm. um, and, and get kind of you know, feedback. Sometimes it, it's difficult to do, you know, get feedback from everybody throughout the process. Mm -hmm. So we kind of have to, you know, kind of lean towards leadership mm -hmm. to help get us there and kind of give us a guidance. Um, but then nothing is ever set in stone until right. you all approve it. So are you able to go back, as I stated, and, and at least have that conversation with them as to the, 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 the adjustment, I'll call it, that you and I have? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, I, I can I can really have that, that conversation. Yeah. Okay, so outside of having too much dialogue with sure. that, if you, if, you, if you will do that much, um, and outside of that, um, I think that the, the whole makeup is, is definitely interesting. Mm -hmm. uh, it's worth having conversation outside of the additional conversation, like I stated, that we probably need to have to make sure that it's a win-win. I'm glad to hear that the school system is all on board and, and it's a win for the school system. And I'm excited, too, about mm -hmm. the things that it also offers the school mm -hmm. system, in which I know a lot about. I just know how much you guys can share, sure. you know, sure. the general public. Yeah. But with that, if we can go back and at least, you know, have that conversation well, with it's Joe, you guys, mm -hmm. whoever else, mm -hmm. about you know um, an additional member mm -hmm. that we could look at, and I, I think we can. Mm -hmm. Colonel Joe, like you want to jump up to the podium? Is there something he's going to clarify something? Oh, mm -hmm. oh, okay, okay. Well, I'll let Joe clarify if it's on. If it's, it's not related to that. Though. Oh, it's not related. <laughs> okay, I thought he was going to jump in and just tell me what the numbers are. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, outside of that, I mean. Uh, Joe, if you want to jump in and, and, and speak your piece, but I think if you can have that that other dialogue, sure. and then we can all kind of come back to some resolve of what that is, and and will this make it in time? Will, will the conversation be quick enough to where we can kind of have this on the agenda for for tomorrow? We're moving very fast. 
Okay, okay, so you can move very fast, <laughs> and if you give, give us an answer, and, and you can probably get back with this board, then I think we can kind of hopefully move. If not, then we'll have another conversation, I guess. Okay. Joe, you know, I guess you want to? I've gotten some bad information. Those permit fees were paid, so I stand corrected on that. The information I got this morning was not correct. Okay, all right. Mm -hmm. So, so Joe, I understand yeah. they're going to take that language out, correct? you got to get the okay with the client that okay. make that recommendation. Oh, so they don't put that back in. They will move the language with respect to the waiver of fees. Mm -hmm. Got it. Okay, good enough. Okay, so Chris, if you'll do that much for me and, and kind of get back with us, I'm assuming the meeting is over, I guess, or something. I, I don't know how quick you, how fast is fast. So devices are so okay. All right. important. Okay, all right. Okay, all right, so I'll, I'll leave it there and, and hope that we get some, some conversation, have some conversation about that, and I yield back. Okay, thank you so much, Commissioner Mitchell. Uh, Commissioner Bart. Yes. Uh, Chris, and you said this are supposed to amend it 10 years, so this is an existing pilot program that we already have. Mm -hmm. So it's, and it will extend it out. In other words, we're in year five now on the existing one, we're going to extend it out. Yeah, yeah we're in year four or five now, so we'll basically continue adding 10 years, basically. But um, it will start, the payment will be next year. The payments will start next year, 2020. All right, thank you. Mm -hmm. back. Thank you so much, Commissioner Bader. All right, um, mm -hmm. if there are no questions, we'll have questions from the board. Thank you so much. Thank you. Mr. Parker. Thank you. Right. Thank you. Right. Appreciate you being here. Thank you. Okay. All right, next we'll move on to our next item, which is the Census 2020 update. It's our first presentation of the day. We have three presentations. I believe two, well, one will be relatively short. But the Census 2020 update works uh, is, I'm sorry, it's Tiffany Stewart and Rob, Rob, Ron Roberts. Where is your name? Song, there you go. Yeah, I thought I saw you. I guess so. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. So uh, I'm Tiffany Stewart Stanley, Director of External Affairs for Douglas County. Um, so I'm excited this morning because we are 134 days away from Census Day. Um, and so myself and Ron Roberts, we are the co-chairs of the Douglas County Complete Count <coughs> Census Committee. And uh, before I get started, I did want to introduce a couple of people who are here with the Census. Um, well, I'll start with Ms. Zakia Turner. She is here with the U.S. Census. I'm Zakia Rashid. Which the yeah, I'm Zakia Rashid. Yes, that's okay. It's all right. And then Ms. Doris Turner. Hi. And then Ms. Ingrid Landis Davis. They are all here with the uh, U.S. Census, and um, they'll come up and give just a brief, some brief statements after we finish. But I'm going to give a brief presentation um, of kind of where we are public engagement wise with the census. So, um, all right. So. We all know how important the census is. Last, I believe in 2010, Georgia got $13.7 billion um, for their census for the census. Um, roughly, we can expect to get about $2,200 per person for the census. So it's very, very important that we count everyone once and in the right place. That is the complete goal for um, the U.S. Census and for the U.S. County to make sure that we count all of our citizens. So. Um, once again, these are our public engagement goals. Our goal is to make sure that people are aware of how the census data is going to be used um, and how it will affect their everyday lives. We also want to make sure that we deepen the trust uh, with the U.S. Census Bureau. Um, let people know we need this information, why it's important, and that your information will be confidential. And our third thing is just to educate the public of the options for responding to the census. So you'll be able to do a phone, mail, and this year for the first time we'll be able to do it online. So that's a new develop development and we want to make sure that people are aware of that. <clears throat> so this is the timeline for the census. So uh, the first thing that we did was we made sure to educate ourselves by going to national conferences, state conferences, to make sure that we are aware of what we need to do to get the word out about the census. We are right now in our strategic early education phase where we're going out letting everybody know, hey, the census is coming. These are the ways you can respond. Please make sure that you know about the census, but that you also let your neighbors and friends and family know. <coughs> um, in January 2020, we'll be going into our awareness phase. And this is where we're, once again, please be aware the census is coming. Look out for your invitation that you'll be getting to respond to the census. 
after, uh, in March, we'll go into the motivation phase. This is where we'll really get out, motivate people, go out into the community and say, hey, let's get excited about the session. This is important. And then after that, we're going to go into our reminder phase, which is May through July. Please make sure you did the census, complete your census. <coughs> so the Douglas County Complete Count Committee, um, this is the organization chart. You'll see here at the top, we got the city of Douglasville, city of Villarica, Douglas County, and city of Austell. But as we all came together to make sure that we work together to get out the word about the citizens in Douglas County. We have six committees on this, uh, on, I'm sorry, as a part of our complete count committee. Nonprofit, education, faith-based, at-large, business, and single citizens. So we've already started engaging citizens with our complete count committee. This is one of the things that we have for the committee members. Right now we have about 60 people who are on our subcommittees. And so you see them brainstorming and coming up with ways to get out and get the word out to the community. And then that's um, some more pictures from that event. So our theme for the census is let's count data. So we're gonna, what we're trying to do is use grassroots, media, digital tools, just to engage citizens, community partnerships, to make sure that people know, hey, we gotta make sure that everybody in Douglas counts. So we have about 50 of these signs around the county. You may have seen that that says 2020 census, let's count. And they're all over the county, making sure that people know that the census is coming. We had our official kickoff on May 14th, and you'll see um, Mayor Reese of Villarica, Mayor Rochelle Robinson of Douglasville, Chairman Dr. Ramona Jackson Jones, and uh, Commissioner Tarina Carthen were our, some of our elected officials that participated in the kickoff. <coughs> we also had a community meeting on June 20th where we invited members of the community to come out and learn more about the census, but we also had laptops around the room where people could actually sign up to work for the census. So we had a lot of citizens who came and they signed up to work for the census. We have community <coughs> partnerships. You'll see um, Ron Roberts and Ms. Turner here. We partner with the chamber at their luncheon to get the word out. We're, you know, we're partnering with local groups such as the Junior League of Douglas County, the Douglas County School System. We really want to get the word out about the census. So we have been at about, about 30 events over the past six months. And you'll see here some of the major events in Douglas County, such as the Taste of Douglasville. We went to the Gold Rush, Best of One Villa Rica, of course, September Saturdays. Um, to get the word out. And we've got some pictures here. This is from the Douglasville Ice Cream Social. We have Tracy Crooks, who is our Community Stakeholder Engagement Coordinator. So she was there helping to pass out information. Um, this is from the um, Gold Rush Festival in Villa Rica. Uh, we made sure to have a presence there. Um, some of the Wind Down Wednesday events. As, we, as you can see, the people with the fans that we gave out at the different events. Um, the trick-or-treating, uh, we had the kids take pictures, and then Ms. Cleo, the reading dog, she's also making sure to help spread the word about the uh, census. <laughs> and we want to thank our commissioners because they have been spreading the word at their town halls um, about the census. All right, and we've also um, worked with different elected officials. We have one of our state representatives who um, you know, got on the stage at um, Wind Wind Down Wednesday and made sure to let the citizens know that they need to participate in the census and where they can find out more information. All right. And then we've got some multimedia. And I'm going to show you a quick sample video of some of the videos we'll be putting out. We're going to ask our elected officials, our community um, leaders, community partners, to do videos just to let people know. So we have one video here that we've done. Every household will start the invitation, invitation, invitation. <coughs> okay. Sorry. Hi, I am Dr. Ramona Jackson Jones, and I'm the chairwoman of Douglas County Board of Commissioners. 2020 will be a great year for Douglas County. We will be celebrating our 150th birthday, so we'll be participating in the 2020 census. I'm asking you to join me in the county. The census is a survey with basic questions like age, sex, and number of people living in your household, including your children. 
census results are used to steer important community decision making. By counting everyone in your household, we can ensure that Douglas County will get the necessary funding for the critical needs such as roads, schools, hospitals, and building <coughs> services. By April 2020, every household will receive an invitation to participate in the 2020 census. Participating is easy. You will be able to respond to the census by phone, by mail, and online. By law, your responses will be safe and confidential. To get more information, <coughs> please visit 2020census.gov. And to find out more about Douglas County activities, visit CelebrateDouglasCounty.com. And remember, let's count Douglas! <laughs> So that's basically what, what I have for you today, just to best let you know that we are out in the community getting the word out. Uh, we plan on, from here, going to HOAs, churches, community meetings, um, just different places where our hard-to-count communities will be, um, just to make sure that we're getting the word out and encouraging other people to get the word out um, about the census. So at this time, I'll bring up Ms. Turner and Ms. <coughs> Linda Davis and Ms. Rashid, and they will give some information on the uh, 2020 census recruiting efforts for Douglas County. Hi, I'm Ingrid Landis Davis. Thank you so much for making my job easy. I am uh, the field manager for Douglas County, and Douglas County is ahead of all the counties in West Georgia. We, we in terms of recruiting, in terms of participation, and thank you so much. This has been, it's really been great. Um, we are less than 100 people away from fulfilling our recruitment goals. None of the other counties are even close <coughs> to that. So, yeah, because you know why? because they're not participating. They don't have a less count committee, and we're doing everything we can to try to get them you know, involved so that they you know, can count, but nothing's happening. So if you know anybody in Carroll or Paulding, tell them to get involved because it's not happening. So thank you. Congratulations. Douglas is doing great. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. My name is Doris Turner. And I am a partnership specialist with the U.S. Census Bureau. And Douglas County is one of my counties uh, that I work with. And I, I want to say how excited I am about how Ron and Tiffany and the whole uh, Complete Count Committee has gotten involved with the census. I mean, we hit the ground running. Uh, we used, I actually use your uh, county as a model for other counties because you've done so well. We wear our pins proudly. We, um, we thank you so much for what you've done. And I'm, I won't go into what the census is all about because uh, your chairman <laughs> has done an excellent job and everyone knows to me, you've done an excellent job in talking about the census. But I want to, one of our initiatives that we're really working toward right now is census in school. And we call it statistics in school. And so we are really pushing that. So we will be working with all the schools in the counties getting them on board. You know, our children are important. Remember, children of age of under five were not counted on the last census, and we lost millions of dollars. So we want to make sure, remember, uh, the census is money and power, and it's very important that you let everyone know in your area that the census is safe, it's easy, it's, it's important, and we will count you once and only once and in the right place. So please, please get involved. We're involved with all of the colleges, all the uh, all universities, um, elementary schools, high schools, middle schools, and we're going to be talking about the census. And we have some great videos that we're going to share um, at the schools, letting them know about how important children are. 
and your PTAs and things of that nature. So make sure that you get involved, stay involved, and let's make sure that Douglas County gets a complete and accurate count in 2020. Okay, thank you. Thank you. <coughs> Any questions from the Board of Commissioners regarding the census and comments? Okay. Yeah, I, and again, I just recognize this is my second census here, and it, it is a totally different experience. Um, there, there is an active engagement. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm pleased with the efforts by the administration on getting the word out there. I mean, it, um, you're wearing it well. You know, in times past, sometimes um, there's an approach to census of you don't want nobody to know. It, it's sort of this, it, it's, it's covert to a certain extent. Um, you, like the comment was made, it, it appears that some people try to avoid it. And it, it, it's probably for the wrong reasons. And I, I just want to acknowledge and commend um, the county for going and leveraging your dollars. I mean, it, it is about dollars. It is about power. It is about like, okay, so you're paying income tax up to the feds and yet you don't want to get it. And you let these other 49 states and other counties take your money. Now, why do you do that? This gives you a position to be able to leverage that through these statistics that they say. So as I always say, follow the money, guys. Let, let's not be so uh, convened in how we approach it. It's important. It's your tax dollars, right? So leverage your local dollars. Go get that federal dollars. And how we do this is through this mechanism about the census. <coughs> Remember what this is all about. So again, I, I just wanted to comment on that. I appreciate the efforts that we're, we're going after it. Um, it's something I've always said, leverage your capital stack. We need federal dollars for a lot of things that we do here locally. Even the state, as much as they say, separate from federal and state. Look at the state's budget. A lot of federal dollars going in that state budget. Um, but they try to downplay that. But again, I, I do appreciate it. And uh, I look forward to it. Thank you so much. Okay, Commissioner Carthen. I just have one question. How are we making sure that we get out to our minority community to ensure that they know that it is safe to fill out the census so that we won't miss them because they're a part of no, I agree. So one of the things that we, we've done, we actually have a, you saw Tracy Crooks in the, um, the photographs. She is our community and stakeholder engagement. We also have um, Maggie Herrera. She is the public outreach coordinator, and she is a Hispanic business, business owner here in Douglas County. She used to be a radio personality in Austell, and she's working with the Hispanic community, um, all, of different, all of our hard to count communities. She's really focusing on that. We're going to use the existing social media of the county, the cities. Um, we will be putting out flyers and laundry mats. And I mean, anywhere you can think of, we're going to be um, you know, putting flyers, doing what we need to do to get to those part of the county communities. Because you know, it's good to go to a chamber luncheon, but you've got to go to the people who you know may not. The census is on their radar because they're trying to survive. You know? So we're really going to be pushing and really getting out and trying to get those people or just everybody involved. Um, I just want to add to that. Also, we, as a partnership specialist, we go to, we look at the, the county tracks. And we look at those tracks that are the hard to count tracks. We call those HTCs. And we make sure that we try to have events in those areas. We make sure that, uh, because when you, when you look at your map and you look at those, those colors, and you see that in those tracks, those particular tracks, that those are the areas that did not respond um, well in our last census. So we want to make sure that we have information about that because we're so excited about uh, the uh, initiative to go online uh, and, and fill out the census. So that's one of the things we're doing. And we're like she said, we're going to all different areas. And you guys have been very instrumental in helping us uh, with that. We, we're partnering with this team as well as our own team because that's our job to to help do that so uh, those are some of the things that we're doing okay thank you I, um, okay. thank you commissioner yeah. mitchell yes and i'd like to add for those and i apologize for talking behind you like that's this. okay <laughs> you could <laughs> but you go to the point <laughs> so you can see your face yes okay. thank you and as commissioner attorney just mentioned those minorities, but what about those that we really need to kind of address those that are homeless, don't have an address? How you, what's the approach to make sure you get those guys? I mean, uh, okay. I'll, I'll, 
they never would like to speak well, she's to that. On her way I'm, to the I'm the field manager, yeah. so yeah. 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 she okay. does the field operations. Because yeah. I, I don't want those guys, which we've done a great job, and this is like my second round of this, so I, I, I get it, but I just want to make it acknowledge that we are definitely we're trying to get oh, yeah. everybody, yeah. not just a sector of them. Right. It's, so it's, um, what we do is we put a team, we put a team into what we call a track, mm -hmm. and um, we break, you know, we break. The, the county up into tracks. Mm -hmm. And we put a team into a track, and what we do is we literally walk the area. <coughs> and and, and <coughs> we, we're trained on how to actually count the, home, the homeless population. So we have special training on that. So, so you, I mean, I know you probably know this though, but you know there are a couple of pockets that within Douglas yes. County that's where they are. If you're not, you can oh, yeah. talk to We have areas trained. that we have, like mm -hmm. you said, a team of people. Mm -hmm. And the, we have a homeless group that actually, that's their initiative, homeless. Like we have an initiative for sensitive schools. Uh, homeless is one of those initiatives as well. So there's, there's people that actually work as partnership to make sure those people are counted. Whether they're in safe, you know, whatever location they're in, like under the, a bridge or in a park or, or wherever they may be, that they are counted. But I think she knows kind of where they are. Yeah, they just, have. Yeah, we know where yeah. they are, and okay. we, you know. We okay, just, I'm just making sure that you guys definitely acknowledge oh, that oh, we're, yes. we're, oh, after, yes. we're after everybody. Everybody. Uh, and, everybody. And, and there's a couple of time factors now that we're going to be feeding the hungry on Thanksgiving. That that we get a, a, a great percentage of these individuals that we normally go out. Uh, we'll do the same thing in December. On December 25th, we'll do the same thing. Uh, okay. Right here on Fairburn Road at the. Um, at the Wendy's. Thank, the Wendy's. You. <laughs> thank you. So, we like to make sure that we're involved in those initiatives. Um, so I will Welcome. You, you, you're invited. Come on down. So, thank you so much. Yeah, so, but but I, I just want to make sure that we don't miss uh, those that are less fortunate who don't have an address. Absolutely. They just kind of, their, their home is where they are. Exactly. And, you know, what they got is what they got. And, exactly. And it's, and it's very little. And I don't, I don't want them to go unnoticed because as the Vice Chair stated, this is your dollar, your tax dollars that you're trying to mm -hmm. Um, protect and, 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 and receive, but if you don't count these individuals, and I'm just a little surprised that we didn't count under five, I'm just a little baffled by that, but I'm glad at least we acknowledge what we went through. That was in 2010. 2010. Yeah, yeah, last time around, so yeah. let's make sure we don't lose those individuals. So, if you, I mean, great job, I mean, this is a great initiative, and thanks to the uh, program manager over there who actually kind of did the videos and got all this stuff, and, mm -hmm. and put all this we, stuff, oh. We did the video. Oh, oh but, but, yeah. 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 great job with the video. Yeah. 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 And we need to uh, acknowledge that by putting it on we, the DC yes, 23, we, we and I'm hoping that the city will do the same yes. on, on their uh, community channel as well, so we won't you know, kind of miss the opportunity <laughs> of, of finding these individuals. Exactly. Uh, it's going to be easier to go to the homes and, and those that are, are, are fortunate enough. That part will be a little bit easy. Mm -hmm. However, it's those ones that you're going to have uh, some hard times in trying to reach out and find it. And, and for those Hispanics and others who feel threatened by this, mm -hmm. what's your plan to make them feel safe? So uh, we've already started um, really uh, approaching the Hispanic community, mm -hmm. um, going to the stores, mm -hmm. uh, and we have the materials all in, all in Spanish, um, going to the stores, going to the churches. Mm -hmm. We are really focusing in, especially over in Lithia Springs area, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. over in that area, we, we've got um, we've actually saturated all the other areas, but that particular area mm -hmm. we are now focusing on. And, and, so. and, and my, it's, my concern is how do you get them to understand that not to be fearful about knowing that we're counting you as opposed to knowing that you're here legal or illegal? We talk about those okay. confidentiality right. things as far as part of partnership goes. We also have, we reach out to the Hispanic um, consulates and, yes. and um, yes. chamber, um, chamber. Mm -hmm. And chain of commerce. Mm -hmm. uh, we know where the pockets are where most um, of Hispanics may live. Mm -hmm. We also have bilingual language. We have bilingual partnership specialists. Uh, so we have uh, Asian, you know. But you know what I'm saying, though. The, mm -hmm. the fear for them is. We talk about that. Okay, so that's what I'm saying. How are you trying to offset that fear that knowing where you are, we just want to count for you, not knowing that you're here legally or illegally? Exactly. I mean, there are some who wants to know what you're here legally. I get that. Mm -hmm. But I think this census, in any sense, is about how many people are here. Exactly. Not whether you're here legal or not. So how do you kind of 
get them from that, that fear of knowing that you're here versus uh, knowing that you're here legally or not? Because we don't really talk about uh, the legal the legalities parts of it, mm -hmm. if you will. We're, if you're here in on the U.S. soil, then you will be counted. Okay. And we have to make sure that we that we make them feel comfortable in knowing mm -hmm. and safe. That's why we talk about how it's safe, it's easy, it's important. And we have people, like I said, groups uh, of our Hispanic Partnership Specialists, they sometimes they feel more comfortable, mm -hmm. uh, you know, talking to, uh, you know, we make sure that we get the churches involved, the Hispanic churches, um, mm -hmm. you know, and they go out and they talk to them and they let them know we're working here and we want you to know that it's safe and it's easy and it's important. So uh, there, there we have sheets for confidentiality. We talk about it a lot. Um, so we don't ignore it. Uh, we we tell them about it. So they know they know about it. And I, and it's, I think it's working because we have a lot of we do a lot of Hispanic um, uh, events and uh, we go to you know we we're just everywhere. And, and I just want to just acknowledge that because I know that's where the fear is. You oh, know yeah. I need mean, I have my green card and I and all this other rich stuff. So. Also, just a recommendation that you guys probably should do a video of some sort. We, you we know, have, that, we that, would, that would be, you know, directed to them that stress the mere fact of We have videos, we have uh, pamphlets with language. We, we have the language yeah. for them. They don't, it's not that, um, um, that she did not show it today, but That's we, okay. That's we okay. have at times would not permit for us to show you all that we do have, but we do have it. Okay, okay, okay. 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 Mm -hmm. Thank you. Good Thank job. You, Mr. Mitchell, yeah. our next video will be using local uh, people who are Hispanic, uh, church leaders, community yeah. leaders, to make sure that the people in the community have people they can identify with. Yeah. So we'll be, we'll be good. And, and just make sure that that gets the programming to make sure that we are airing that. And, right. And frequently airing that. Because I think that's important. Yeah. Okay. okay. Yeah. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Thank you. Okay. Okay. Thank you so much, Commissioner mm -hmm. Mitchell. All right. Thank you all so much. Uh, Tiffany, Director Stewart Stanley, can we make sure I, what was the um, count last in 2010? If you don't know it, that's okay, because I want official count. 74%. 74%. Right, no, right. How many people translate into number of citizens? Um, that's okay if you don't know it. 132. 132? I believe it was around that number, but I don't know the exact number. That's okay. I can get, back to you get the official that. number for 90. 2000 mm -hmm. and 2010, please. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. All right. Thank you so much, Tiffany, for that presentation. The Lincoln Stone Affairs. All right. All heart and mind clear on the census. I'm going to um, shift a little bit. We have our judge here. So I'm yeah. going to get him back to this courtroom. Uh, judge Bo McClain, if you would come forward. Uh, and it's tab number 10. Mm -hmm. it's tab number 10 is authorization to approve the intergovernmental agreement. Oh, I'm sorry. It's tab number 10. Authorization to approve an MOU with the Douglas County Homeless Coalition and Corporation DCHC to provide case management services at the director of, uh, direction of DCHC and Judge McClain to be paid at, at the rate of $15 per hour based upon the 40 hour week and authorize the chairman to sign all related documents. Judge McClain. Thank you. You know, I like let's count, but I like everybody counts. Mm -hmm. A little better, including the homeless, as yes, some of the commissioners have pointed out. Uh, I can't speak to the specific language in the MOU because the county attorney took what I wrote and completely changed everything. So uh, he, he <laughs> to the better, right? To the better. <laughs> so he gets credit for that and he likes correcting me any chance he gets. So I'm, I'm, it's my pleasure to let him do that. But I can't speak to the goal. Um, when we first started the Sanctuary Village Initiative with the Board of Commissioners, uh, we all agreed and understood that we would need a person to supervise these folks, to manage them, to make sure they get to their treatment, to make sure they get to their programming, to transport them to and fro. And one of the reasons that we located Sanctuary Village at the uh, landfill was uh, cost. We were saving a, a lot of money using that space and that property. But there is some pushback from some elements of the community to not have the homeless in their neighborhood or in their 
backyard. And so having them where we, we're going to have them means they've got to be transported. Uh, they're not going to be able to walk from the landfill to the CSB, for example, or walk from the landfill uh, to apply for a job or even work at a job. So the original <coughs> vision was to have at least one person who would oversee the location, make sure it's kept in good order, make sure it's kept in repair, uh, keep uh, a good eye on the residents, and also make sure that they go to the programming that we're going to design for them at the Community Services Board. And what came about was the United Way, through the uh, efforts of the Homeless Coalition, decided to give the coalition a three-for-one grant for this person uh, to manage Sanctuary Village. And that's what's in the grant. Uh, this person is to be dedicated to Sanctuary Village, and the United Way is going to give us $3 for every $1 that we contribute, which will not only be for the compensation for this person, but it will also go to uh, first month's rent or utilities once the person <coughs> transitions out of Sanctuary Village to their own residence. And so some of the funds are set aside by the United Way for that purpose. The Homeless Coalition has got someone hired uh, that I 100% agree with to do this job. Um, and we need this MOU basically so we can contribute our portion to that person's compensation but also so it would be legally authorized for the county to loan a van to take people to and fro uh, and go through the driver safety course that you have to go through. So this person will not be a county employee. They will not be receiving county benefits. They will be an employee of the Douglas County Homeless Coalition, but we will be contributing uh, funds in a van to that work. So that's, that's the goal. And the person's already on the job, has been for a few weeks, get, establishing relationship with the homeless, establishing relationship with the CSB, uh, going out to the homeless camps with the folks with the coalition that serve them on a weekly, weekly basis, getting to know and build trust with the homeless folks, and also getting to know the system that Mr. Light has at the CSB. So that's what we're asking for the commission to do. And there's no budget impact that I know of. The, the funds that we're talking about are going to come out of my existing budget, assuming my budget stays the same uh, and isn't cut. We'll be able to afford it uh, in my budget. Okay. Yeah. Attorney, I believe you have a comment. Yeah, Madam Chair, we're in agreement with Judge McLean, and we have drafted final revisions that the judge and I, I think we agree on those final revisions. Uh, the, the point, I, I think, uh, a couple points. Number one, the MOU is for a year. It can be terminated by either party with 30 days notice. If the grant funding ends, y'all, it's discretionary whether it continues. Uh, I do need to make y'all aware of this one point. Even though the employee technically is not in our employee, under some case law, uh, the concern might be that he might be considered a joint, we might be a joint employer for liability purposes, but I think it's a risk the county's willing to take to get accomplish the mission. So I don't want to bog down in the weeds, but I do need to point that out, that although we structured this as if the, the person works for another entity, under the case law, because of the how it's being funded, it might be considered a joint employment relationship for purposes of liability. It'll just be an inherent risk of what we do every day and providing services. So, but I did want to point that out. But I think the judge and I have agreed on the final language. And uh, if y'all want to move this forward, we're ready. Okay. Any questions from the board? Yeah, I mean, two quick things. Um, county Administrator, we don't anticipate um, any cuts to the judge's budget, do we? Um, to the operating budget, yes, but these, you've got, you have grant funds too, right? Or the date funds? Yes, for the time being. This is across the board, so that's how I'm <laughs> Yeah. This spot. Okay, we'll come back to that. I, yeah. I, I, no? Okay. Right. Just make a note of that. Um, that right. I, I did not anticipate any 
um, shortcoming in, in, in that, that section for this budget. But the budget process is not over. We're still in play, but I'm glad they brought that out. Thank you, Judge, for saying that. Um, and it wasn't your fund specifically. It was across the board. Right. So, uh, well, we, we returned money. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, you you got to make them feel good now, Mark. Come on. Now. All right. We got it. We got it. All right. Let me keep going. Uh, Judge, um, I appreciate your efforts here. Again, it is about leveraging our dollars. I didn't know you were back there. I would acknowledge you, my, my bad. Um, but I do um, respect the fact of how you really go at uh, your efforts. I mean, you really try to be um, you know, deliberate and intentional in how you uh, are designing and erecting your, your service delivery model. Um, it's holistic. Um, it, 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 it's, it's not anxious. Um, and I, I, it, it's very prudent. I, I appreciate it. And I've watched you um, operate this um, <coughs> quite some time, and so I'm excited about this. Obviously, we were involved in the Homeless Coalition early on. Uh, Commissioner Mitch and I, we first started this whole thing with Richard Brand, uh, no, Charles Brand. And so I appreciate it. So here's my question then. Um, three to one, or three to what? No, three out of four, three to one. For every one dollar, we get three. One, three, you get your total of <coughs> All right, so how much is that, roughly? Just, you mean, is it 50000 we're paying this person all loaded, or? Well, we're contributing $5 an hour uh, for his compensation. His, his, his hourly yeah. compensation is $15 an hour. He has a master's degree. He's a Marine Corps veteran. Um, and he's been a long time volunteer at the pantry for about eight or nine years, so he's got a heart to serve. Mm -hmm. right. And we are going to pay $654 a month through the, to, to the Affordable Care Act. We're not going to pay it. We're going to give him the money to purchase health insurance for his family. That's what I was going to go. You, you've answered that. How, how are you going to approach this? And to, to, to our attorney's point, um, they are doing a lot of work on our behalf and, and sort of um, are you, and, and Ken, this is what I'm for, is this a clean cut? In other words, I, I appreciate when we say we're, we're creating a job, right? We're creating an opportunity for somebody out we, we had this conversation during the budget process. We're creating a job. This is somebody that you know, that you guys are comfortable <coughs> with. And so, but are they getting the full benefit? And it sounds like um, we're getting there, right? Um, full benefits? You're going to fund his benefits? We're going to give him $654 to buy health insurance on his own because he's not a county employee and so he's not eligible to receive any benefits from the county. Yeah. And quite frankly, it's a mechanism to control costs in doing something we've never done before. We want to see how it works before we make too big an investment in it. I see. Yeah, but, but we're doing good. I mean, we started from just knowing that people exist and now we're putting a real system in place it, it, at some point it become institutional. <coughs> uh, I do appreciate it that we're just not throwing hard local dollars at that thing to build it up really, really fast. I mean, you're being deliberate. So again, keep going. You are a model that I, obviously I've been watching for quite some time and I appreciate your approach. Um, I have no uh, objections to this. Now, Chair, are you up? Okay, thank you so much. I appreciate it. Um, Robinson, that's all. Commissioner McCarthy, first thing. <coughs> I don't know if this question is for Judge McLean or for you, but when it comes to um, <coughs> county vehicles, <coughs> who is responsible for that? And I only say this because I sit on the safety committee board, Judge, so I get to see <coughs> how many incidents happen with county vehicles. And so I have to take that into consideration if we are <coughs> Well, uh, to make I, we work backwards on this one to, to get the result that the judge is trying to achieve. I think everybody's favorable towards we sort of work a piecemeal of contract. The truth of the matter is, is when you loan a county vehicle to provide a service, uh, you've got a permissive driver in there. You were, that's why I said there's some potential joint employment issues and also <coughs> joint liability issues because of the car. But, you know, I think it's no different risk than anybody else is driving a car right now for the county. But yes, it, we would potentially be on the hook related to the use of a vehicle uh, because it's got our name on it. Our insurance would be at risk. Mm -hmm. And Matt will make sure that the vehicle's covered. Uh, did that answer your question? It does, but I, I would wish we would look at maybe an alternative to using the county vehicle. I understand that the, you know, 
the people who are under the the, um, the program need to have transportation. But we do have Connect Douglas, we do have other alternatives, we do have the door service that we do provide, the flex service that we provide. If we could use some of that as opposed to just yeah. I, I think, and I don't want to speak for the judge, let him weigh in when he wants to, but I think the concern was in order to monetize the amount of money in the best way, if if we third partied the contract with the coalition and they had to provide a car, they would come to y'all for funds to buy the car, the insurance and everything else. So we just essentially wrapping it into one for the car. And I can't speak to the issue of when a car is needed or not, but Apparently, this particular person, his job is going to require back and forth and everything else. And so that's how we got to where we got it. Judge, you want to address that? Well, let me say this with total respect. But if you want to put a Connect Douglas uh, bus and driver at my complete disposal, I will take it. But with this population, you might have to take them to Carrollton to get an ID. You might have to take them to the hospital. You might have to take them to the pantry to get food. You might have to take them to the CSB. And the CSB, we're not going to be able to determine their schedule for their services. So it's going to be hard to to not have the flexibility. I don't know how we can do it. Is it not feasible for that individual that you're speaking of to use their own personal vehicle? To transport. To transport. Like, he's got a pickup truck. Now he could put eight or nine people in the bed of the truck, I suppose. <laughs> I'm just wondering. I'm just talking out loud. Right. We just it, have it's, the, the issue is flexibility. Yeah. You know, a dedicated transportation service, is it going to be available to take someone to Carrollton? Is it going to be available to take someone to the food stamp office? Is it going to be available when the CSB says this is the class that this guy has to go to, which is going to be a class that will have other people in it, will not necessarily be a dedicated class just for our people. So uh, I don't know how we could do that, but we, we can certainly give it a shot. Yep. And I can add, Madam Carthen, I think the issue is still going to be the same. Uh, if he had a private car and he was using it and getting reimbursed, his insurance is probably going to say because he was in the course and scope of a commercial <coughs> enterprise that is transporting people under pay, work for hire, so to speak. It's not going to be covered under his baseline car insurance. Mm -hmm. Ultimately, they look who employs him. It would be the joint employment situation I raised earlier. So I don't think you're going to get around this no matter how we wrap it. Okay. 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 It is very challenging. And uh, so, at least from my point of view, it, flexibility is something we're, we're hoping we can get. Gotcha. All right. Yeah. Ms. Lincoln, I got her. Uh, yes, Judge, um, when this person is taking someone to Carrollton to get an ID, that's going to vacate his uh, presence at Sanctuary City. How is one person going to do this? Uh, they may be, he may be taking them all over to the uh, CSB, S S service, yeah, CSB. Um, uh, is one person going to be driving it and nobody um, checking to make sure everybody's doing what they're supposed to be doing in the bus, kind of like a bus control uh, patrol? I'm not sure I understand your question. But well, this person is to oversee the sanctuary village, mm -hmm. and he's going to be taking one individual over here. And he, then, he's not going to live there. He, he's he's going to. He's going to be there forty hours. Check the a day. place periodically. I mean, he's going to make hours visits a week, uh, to the location. He's going to inspect the facilities. He's going to interact, but he's not going to like permanently reside mm -hmm. there. But That's, he's going to be there forty hours. This is going to be his job, 40 yeah, hours so a week. So he's going to be it's on the job, no. but what if he needs to be over here right. and there's still people yeah. over here? Is he not? Is it okay for him to leave the village? He's going to have to. We're not going to be able to have the resources to have someone like sit guard over them 24 7. Now, I'm hoping that I'll be able to employ someone in the sheriff's office to live there and get free rent because I'm building two family units and I've talked to the sheriff about it and a single man 
what we call a courtesy officer. A lot of the apartment complexes and even some neighborhoods have an officer that lives there and gets free rent in exchange for keeping an eye on things. But, and I think that would be something we'd have to look at once we scale up and have a lot of people there. But I don't have the resources to have someone watch them like a, a guard or something. So it, that's not his, his job, is to watch over the village, just to just kind of make sure it's Not on a 24-7 basis, but yeah. to inspect the facilities, check on the participants, transport them, make sure it's repaired, make sure there's no contraband there, make sure they're not having guests or tearing it up. But we're also going to have a, a, a video security system like we have at our other uh, residences that we operate. And we don't have full-time staff there either. And Edwin doesn't have full-time staff at his shelter. Full-time staff at a shelter is a very, very hard thing to come by. It's very hard to find someone that will do it. It's very hard to find the money to pay for it. And you'll find that you're not going to have full-time staff at any homeless shelter unless it's a very, very large, well-funded facility. It just doesn't really exist. Uh, also, you said that you were going to be paying $650 toward the insurance for him and his family. That's uh, correct. We don't, the county doesn't pay for the family of anybody. This is kind of unusual. But you're talking about $650 a month? $650 a month that he would directly... But it's a month. It's not just for a year. Or <laughs> That's what it costs through the Affordable, the affordable Care Act. Okay. But uh, I, I didn't understand why we were paying for the family also. Well, because he has a family. Well, they don't have insurance. Well, I know, but all of our employees have families, is what I'm saying. Although he's not an employee, we're supplementing him in a way that yes. we don't supplement employees. So I just thought that was kind of odd. I, I didn't, it's news to me if, if our insurance or the county doesn't cover family members. I didn't know that. Okay. Just covers the employee. Well, yeah, the employee does. has to pay for the, I see. For the family. This is family coverage. That's what he's talking about. Okay. I hear back. Okay, Commissioner Mitchell. So, to make sure we clear, you're paying, you're giving him $600. Now, how yes. is he so fit to cover his family or not? Mm -hmm. Or how? That's all you're saying you're going to get to him. Now, yes. if, if, if he picks up a family coverage, which I think he will, it may cost him $900. He will need to deal with the other $300 yes. if that's the case. Okay. Yes, okay, I just want to make sure we understand that because I think we're getting a little confused of trying to say you're trying to pay for the family, which you're just saying, here's a magical number of $600 that will cover his insurance. Now, his insurance needs are family, not, he's not, in, he's not by himself. Am I correct? He, he has a wife. Uh, okay, a all right. Small child. <coughs> they, have dogs, <coughs> and they, they don't have insurance because right. they can't afford it. I understand. But you're contributing $600 for his insurance. I just feel like it's the right thing to do no, that's okay. for not someone not. of this quality who's getting paid fifteen dollars an hour and to do something most people. I, I totally agree with you. Do. I just wanted to clarify that this is the amount of money you you saw that might be enough to cover whatever mm -hmm. he's trying to cover when yes. it comes to insurance. And he happened to have a family that kind of may be more than that. I mean, I'm assuming it probably is more than that six hundred dollars, but that's a roundabout number that you guys found thought was a good number to gauge on. Right? Nice. Okay, all right, all right, so much for that. Um, I, I, I think Commissioner and I, uh, Vice Chair and I was trying to really try to understand the 3% or the $15 and, and where I, you eventually would get with us and say what that number is, because um, just, just saying. Uh, it's $5 an hour okay, so plus the cost of the right. insurance. So, so to put right. it in, easily understandable terms thank you it's about a hundred and fifty dollars over minimum wage that the county would be computing. minimum wage is twelve hundred sixty dollars a month okay so we're talking five dollars an hour 40 hours a week two hundred dollars a week plus the cost of the insurance gotcha so the county would be contributing um 
fourteen hundred dollars a month. Okay, so and, and and that number will be covered. I think you mentioned in your budget or somewhere if your budget allows for. It. <laughs> if it doesn't, then I'm gonna have to go. I don't know what I'm gonna do. <laughs> okay, so because I, I think I know where he was going, but where we all are going with this is that there has been some unique adjustments that are coming mm -hmm. forth about the budget and um, that could become interesting. <clears throat> Not that it may hurt this situation, but it could become interesting, that's all. So, with well, that, I think interesting is interesting. I, I like well, it, it is. It, we'll, we'll, we'll get with it. We'll, we'll cross that bridge when we get to it. Um, and outside of that, so this gentleman will be dealing with a budget, I would assume, that you guys will have. He would, whether it's through us or through um, Who's that? Who's that? Through the homeless coalition. Homeless coalition. So he or she, he would be dealing with some form of a budget that will have to deal with the light, gas, water, um, and all that stuff. And, and he'll, I'm assuming he's prepared for dealing with budgets, even though it may be a small budget, but he'll still have to deal with that. I, I would have to deal with the budget of the facility myself. Okay. okay. Like I deal with the budget of the two houses that we already operate. Got it. But so he would just have to deal with the folks. Okay, just transporting them to and from, and you guys will say, okay, you, you're coming in and budget, you know, because I'm assuming there will be an expense even from gas travel. Yes. At least, you know, that, that, that would be definitely a gas expense. Right, so, so with that, I'm assuming that'll be reimbursable as you go along, or we just kind of pick up a county vehicle and gas it up and which would be charged to my budget. Of the only charge your budget, okay. So, just I want to make sure we're accounting for all the numbers that the possible numbers of possibilities. So, it, it, it sounds like it won't be a whole lot, but it could be if he's going back to Carrollton and back, you know, three or four times a day. That could become an interesting number as we move along this journey. And but, it's hard to predict until we figure out just how many people we're going to be managing and when. Which, which is which is a moving target. Yeah, yeah, and, and, and it, even then it'll still be a moving target because it's the need. If it's trying to fulfill the need, and that need could be one this time and ten the next time to get to and from Carol's and back. I'm only using hypothetical, so that that that's that moving target that you don't know until it happens. So I get it. But outside of that, I, I'll be good. That I yield back. Okay. Thank you so much, Commissioner Mitchell. All right, Judge, appreciate your presentation. Thank you very much. Wow, nice job. Judge, yes, real quick, just, just to clarify. <coughs> so $15 an hour, that's fine. We get um, a living wage. I appreciate that. That's something I think is important um, to acknowledge. Um, um, all right, so here's what happens now. We won't find ourselves in him working the hourly wage that he starts getting overtime, that he gets busy. Mm -hmm. All right, so you know, we, we, not that he would get a million dollars worth of overtime, but relatively speaking, um, that he doesn't become a lifestyle creator. Um, how will you balance that? Because that's something that we're sensitive to. Will you, is there a cap? Are you just saying three to one, fifteen dollars an hour for the sake of the conversation to say that's what we're shooting for? Or is there? Are we saying a salary fixed? And we won't have to be worried about that. Now it's just the way you translate it. What, what are you saying? Just for the record, five dollars an hour. For a 40 hour week, no overtime. $654 a month for the insurance period. No overtime. No, sir. But if he works overtime, we're required by what law mm -hmm. to pay him overtime? Mm -hmm. So, how are y'all going to get this? Something to think about. I'm okay with things as is, but we, we've been dealing with this. This ain't new to us. So, I just want to be sensitive that, that the heart is right, mm -hmm. but the law is the law. And if that guy works 41 hours, we owe him an hour <coughs> worth of overtime. And so, how will we regulate that? Um, and, and so it may be needed that he needs to go do what he needs to do. We won't argue that. We'll have to pay him. But we just know how this works. So if we could be sensitive to that, y'all work through this. And I'm sure I won't labor this now, but I, I just want to make sure that it's acknowledged. I'm good. Thank you. Okay. I'm good. Well, if y'all say, I don't know about overtime for someone who's technically an employee of the Homeless Coalition under contract, but assuming that that's the case, uh, all I can tell you is it's up to you. If you don't want him to have any overtime, he'll go off the clock for 40 hours no matter what. Got you. We're good, sir. Okay. Or, or, I don't know, do we, Ken, is maybe a question for you, though. Do we make this a salary type of a contractual agreement, you know, so that way 
it doesn't matter if he worked 51 hours or, or 25 hours, he'll get that, you know, that amount, $15 an hour times 40, blah, blah. And that way, to, to assure that overtime won't become a, a, a headache for you. Can I just interject something sure. on yeah, that? Sure. The whole purpose was to save y'all money yeah, yeah. and not add a position <clears throat> to y'all and not add benefits and not add salary and do this as cost effectively as possible. And you've done but, that. But we'll, no, we'll no, go no. in whatever direction you guys want to go. No, no Judge, you, you've done that. I think we, you, you've done that part. I think you've done a great job at that. I think, based on Vice Chairman's comment, that if he works overtime, the way it's structured, we owe him based on the EEOC laws and everything else. Overtime, correct? Yeah. Well, he's a, a, a technically a coalition owes it, but well, I mean, we yeah. could be considered a joint yeah. employer. Yeah. Back to the so, back to but the here's the problem: okay. even, even if he was working here, he's getting supervised by Judge McLean and his people. We have no way of controlling the hours, even if we put him on staff here. In other words, they are the supervisors. Does that make sense? But but my point though is, if he was salaried that he made thirty thousand dollars a year, twenty five dollars a month, whatever that number is, then that that whether you work ten hours or fifty one hours, that's what you'll get. That's your monthly, weekly salary. What that. The question is going to become on that whether or not he's an exempt employee or not. If he's not an exempt employee, he still would have uh, arguments for overtime and comp time. If the number of hours divided by the pay did not equate, to, it, it worked out that he was working more hours. He potentially could, we could, somebody could be liable for overtime. The people that are exempt on salary tend to be management level mm -hmm. up. Where it doesn't matter how many hours they work, that's what they get paid. Professional so, services, doesn't so, matter how many hours, that's what they get paid. So He's driving the, a bus. Yeah, so for the judge, he couldn't be the supervisor of uh, of this particular facility. You wouldn't, I don't think that you care about that because you're saying if there's no overtime, there's no overtime. <coughs> so we call him Supervisor X to say, to exempt him from overtime. I'm just only asking from you guys if one of you is that dual. I think we just need to tell Judge, Judge, it's your budget. He doesn't need to go on overtime because we're not funding overtime. It's going to come out some way from you eventually if you get into overtime because your your control is on the budget part of it, if that makes any sense. You control his budget that he's using to the extent you contribute any money to it on these programs. We'll have another conversation about this. We, we talk, just so you know, I don't want to, to – shake off what you're saying but we our initial instincts were let's just make him a staff person and do x y and z what you're pointing out now but because of the dialogue about money and benefits and control and all that we then moved to where we are now so that was discussed whether it should be uh, uh remember this is terminable in 30 days notice is terminable when the grant's not there it's terminable whereas if you had an employee then you got to concern yourself. Well, can you just terminate based on that? I just thought it. So that's how, that's how we got to where we are. But I'm still not where I think where we where I think Vice Chair and others are trying to to get to. So, but we'll judge. I'm, I'm going to leave that. We're here. we're comfortable with whatever you guys say. Obviously, as long as we can just get the job done. The the structure, the that. paperwork, is. I get that. I leave that to y'all. I get that. Thank you very much. Thank Thank you. Back. I yield back. Thank you so much, Judge. Appreciate your presentation. Thank you, sir. Thank, Thank you all so much for coming. Keep up the good work. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you. 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 All right. Thank you, Judge. I'm shifting gears just a little bit. I have another, um, our, our Solicitor General is here too and needs to get back to the court. Solicitor General uh, Sumpton, uh, Sonia Compton, please come forward. There you are. Okay. Um, tab number 12 is authorization to advertise for a public hearing to create a new ordinance regarding disorderly conduct at the request of the Solicitor General. Uh, Good morning, Elizabeth Compton, please. Uh, Good morning. Explain. Yes. I think you all have a copy of the ordinance proposed, is that correct? Yes. Okay. 
One was sent out by Mr. Bernard Hyrod, mm -hmm. disseminated another one this morning that made one small <coughs> change in number two. I removed the phrase in any manner. So I'm here asking you all to authorize that this ordinance be proposed, uh, be publicized as a proposed new ordinance for our county. The ordinance will be called the Disorderly Conduct Ordinance, and it specifies certain acts that will be considered disorderly conduct in this county, and we will handle it under the county ordinance as opposed to a state statute. Okay, any questions for the board? Um, I saw Commissioner Carlton, I saw yours first. And Plus General Compton, can you explain why this is needed? Absolutely. Right now, uh, numerous counties, Cobb, Henry, and the very, various other counties have what they call county ordinance, ordinances. And it covers um, different types of provisions, <coughs> and, and of course we have them here. But right now, we don't have one in our county for disorderly conduct. Oftentimes, because we prosecute misdemeanor cases, we have cases such as public drunkenness, bordering and prowling. If we could prosecute those cases as a county ordinance, that would assist us very, very much. The other thing is, right now, and I'm sure which brought this to everybody's attention, is number two, which deals with possession of less than an ounce of marijuana. Less than an ounce of marijuana is a misdemeanor. Unfortunately, due to the new hemp law, we cannot prosecute that here in Douglas County. And the reason being is, in order to prosecute a drug, you must be able to prove that it is, in fact, that drug. Mm -hmm. Right now, hemp and marijuana is very close. And what distinguishes is the THC level. In order to prove that it's marijuana, the THC level must be <coughs> above 0 .03. We don't have the capacity or the equipment here in Douglas County to test the marijuana to prove that the THC level is above <coughs> the 0 .03. The Georgia Bureau of Investigation does have a machine. That machine costs $250,000. Plus, they must have someone who is, in fact, able to operate that machine, and they must also buy the chemicals for that machine. Our sheriff department here does not have <coughs> that machine. The GBI will only test what we call felony amounts of marijuana, more than one ounce. And, you know, a lot of people don't know what an ounce of marijuana looks like, less than an ounce. So I brought some, so you all can see what we normally have to prosecute. <coughs> this was taken out from our vault. Less than an ounce of marijuana is a very small amount. We can pass that around. <coughs> this has to be tested to be proven that it's in fact marijuana. The largest amount we have is this, which is less than an ounce. Right now, all of these cases here, we cannot prosecute them because we can't prove that it is in fact marijuana. We know it's marijuana, but can we legally prove that it's marijuana? The answer is no. So what we're proposing is a county ordinance. A county ordinance is an ordinance where the person would actually be guilty, they can be placed on probation, they can get a fine up to $1,000. The only difference is it won't be put on their criminal history. That's the only difference. That way, right now we have more than 40 cases in our, just only marijuana cases. <laughs> in our office that we, can, that we cannot prosecute. Also, we have cases where they may have one charge in addition to the marijuana charges. So what we're having to do now, we'll prosecute them on that one charge just to, get, to go ahead and resolve the case and dismiss the marijuana charges. But if we can prosecute that marijuana charge under the county ordinance, that gives us additional, and by the way, they won't just be paying a fine. They can also be required to get a clinical evaluation. Everything that has happened before, the only thing that's different is it will not be on their criminal history. Um, received an email today where the district attorney, uh, Mr. Leonard, understands that this would not in any way compromise the felony amounts of marijuana, 
It would be strictly for <coughs> misdemeanor amounts of marijuana. And that way we can resolve these cases. People can be punished. Fines can be imposed. And we can go on. If not, you may have to end up dismissing these cases. And that's not what we want to do. Thank you so much. Thank you, thank you so much. Mm -hmm. Uh, Commissioner Patty, for you, I just wanted to mention uh, to the solicitor on the, uh, tab number two, and then you have a little asterisk that says F, this ordinance is not intended in any manner to decriminalize the possession of marijuana. So yeah, I, right. that, that helps with that. No, you said it does not. I'm just looking at you know, okay. your little asterisk. Commissioner Patty, <coughs> do you have a question? Uh, yes, I'm a solicitor. Um, this Aren't the in the state or whoever, aren't they in the process of coming up with testing that will di differentiate between uh, the hemp oil and the, uh, the hemp and the marijuana? They, they have a machine right now that will do it. The GBI has a machine that will do that. However, they will not test misdemeanor amounts of marijuana. But is this the first step to legalizing marijuana? Uh, I don't know. I'm not a see, legislator. I, well, see, I don't know that much about the laws. <clears throat> um, I'd like to, for someone to explain it to me more um, that may be on the other side, too, to show me the pros and cons to changing a law. You're not changing the law. No, 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 no. Well, you're implementing a new law. I'm not implementing the law at all. I am, only thing I'm proposing is a county ordinance, which also is supported by the state law that says marijuana is illegal. What it does is give us a way to punish people who violate the law. Well, right now we cannot. You understand that, right? Well, a, a county ordinance can take place of the uh, state law, I guess. I don't know enough about it. That's why I need someone to explain it more. Um, it scares me when we start putting codes in there that kind of addresses a state law, you know. And it's like an open Pandora's box, so to speak. I just <coughs> don't know more about it. Uh, legal, have you looked at this? Do you? I know there was a lot of people interested in changing what she initially was bringing forward to us. Uh, you know, the sheriff had some problems with it and everything else. I'd like to hear what their side is. You know, why did they, uh, If I may, uh -huh. the sheriff is in support of this because he understands that we cannot prosecute. His deputies are happy that I'm finding a way to prosecute people who violate the law here in Douglas County. So is this to, to have a public hearing about this? Or? Well, well, this is only to advertise that you have to have a public hearing because you're creating an ordinance so there would be a public hearing. <coughs> this is on the agenda to advertise it, so to advertise it. for a public hearing in the future. I will say, uh, Madam Solicitor and I met and her staff when she asked about this. This version has been worked up, I don't know how many times, Sonia, between you and I, but it's been shared with the state court judges, it's been shared with the DA's office, it's been shared with the sheriff. And I think the original kinks that everybody was concerned with really aren't present in this anymore. And what I mean by that is this. Uh, the, our concern was when you create an ordinance, there's a rule of lenity, which means that if you, if there's a lesser alternative sentence somewhere, that a felony could become an <coughs> ordinance violation. But I've gotten confirmation from the folks that do all that, that they don't see the rule of lenity being a problem with this meaning they don't see that they're going to lose uh, felony cases to an ordinance violation. Uh, the other is thrown in to give uh, Madam Solicitor uh, options for disp disposing of the case. Um, and I will say this, probably the, uh, the only issue, if there is an issue, is if you can't prosecute, you're basically cutting the baby. And what I mean by that is this, you're splitting the difference between two ends. If a misdemeanor is 12 months and a thousand dollar fine, and an ordinance violation is six months and a thousand dollar fine, but a non-prosecution is zero, mm -hmm. you really are going to the middle ground to find an option for some of these cases. Now, having said that, whether they solve, she's correct about the hemp marijuana problem right now, mm -hmm. the testing levels, 
<coughs> the cost of doing it is almost astronomical, prohibitive, so they don't they really don't do it. Having said that, I don't know if they're going to solve that problem. I really don't know where this is heading, uh, but it was her intent not to, uh, the Madam Solicitor's intent not to decriminalize, but to have another safe haven for prosecutions. Now, are the judges on board with this? Yes, they are. All of them? Well, the state court judges. Here's what here's what the judges, I, what, what the judges <coughs> will do. We, uh, we send this out to judges, and the judges won't comment. But if they had a concern that was negative, they would let me know. The reason why they don't, they're supposed to be neutral. They can't, whatever. So I was more concerned about what Ryan Leonard was going to say because I didn't want to give away a heroin case to an ordinance mm -hmm. violation. But I have had communication with the judges. I don't think, although this is concurrent jurisdiction with state court and magistrate court, it's going to create a caseload problem for Susan, although she's worried about that. <coughs> it really is going to give her a chance to dispose of this in a way. If you're on the other side, what you're interested in is your driver's license and your criminal record. Okay. This will cause them, I would su suggest probably more times than not, the cost of hiring a lawyer to defend against something like this versus paying the fine and accepting the consequences probably will help remove those cases. That's reality, and I think that's what Sonia's trying to achieve here. Um, <coughs> I can't tell you where this is going long term because you know what's going on in the nation and you see it on the TV, so I don't know. But I will tell you, she does have a testing problem right now. <coughs> Tanya, did I cover that all right? Yes, I, you I think everybody's, we've talked to Sheriff Pounds just so everybody knows. Uh, I've talked to him personally. <coughs> I've talked to Ken Connor. There was concerns about the first rounds. But the sheriff actually met with Sonia, met with me, met with the DA. In fact, he marched up the DA's office to make sure we're going to mess up any of his cases mm -hmm. that he's really worried about. And the word I've gotten back from the sheriff is he's fine with this. The word I got back from Ryan the other day, which I think the solicitor has mentioned, they don't see it as interfering with their felony uh, prosecutions. So I don't know what else I can ask. I don't think a judge is going on the record and say, Here's my response to it because that would be them taking a position on something that's purely the legislative branch of government. Uh, this is y'all. This um, y'all do it at her request. It's a legislative function if y'all going to do it. So the executive branch, the judicial branch, probably won't weigh in. But if there was a problem, I promise you, my phone would have been lit up. And I think it's down to where it's not getting lit up anymore. Not at all. It got lit up for a while, but now it's calm. Okay. Yeah, okay, thank you so much. Uh, I'll show them Robinson. Yeah, uh, yeah we, we, we should be able to just get along this point. Um, but, but to this point, this is an important one. Not very often in the 10 years I've been here that we've ever exercised a truly legislative policy. We do a lot of code changes. I mean, it, we don't really, we have the capacity. And so I appreciate the fact, no, we, we can change this. Yes, I understand the state's power. I understand state laws, state statutes, but we at the local level can affect things like that the way we want our county to operate, right? And, and so Ken's right, like, no, this is our call. I'm not going to I'm not going to run through the conversation, kick the can back up to the state when we actually have the authority and power to do it locally. All politics is local, so this is something. Again, this is just a notice of hearing, but we need to look at this. And I, I agree with Madam Guy. Let's look at every angle and what this is about and take a position. But, but this, this, you're right, everybody's trying to be neutral on this when they're trying to slide this one through. It's like, okay, it's going to be good. But let's, let's, let's not hide from what, what this may potentially be. I don't want to do the citizens like that, but just go over. Look at this issue. This is major. And it's up to the Board of Commissioners whether or not we're going to enact this locally. And, and, and so I, I appreciate the conversation, but this is just a notice. That's what I'm saying, Madam Chair, we shouldn't get too deep into this because this is just a notice that I mean, all this will come out later. So I yield. Okay, you thank you so much. Yep. And thank you, Solicitor, for taking the time to explain it to me and, and also just just reemphasizing that this ordinance was not intended in any manner mm -hmm. to decriminalize marijuana. Because, you know, I had those conversations with you because me and you both know it's not legal in the state of Georgia. So thank you for clarifying and bringing my mind to peace and order because I don't support marijuana in any way, form, or fashion. But you made a statement that you're not trying to be and in fact, you're trying to see what you can do to penalize. Yeah, absolutely. So, okay. Thank you so much, and we thank look you. forward to a public hearing on this. Yep. Thank, thank you. you.
All right, I have one more judge that came in. She's here, and I don't, I'm trying to get our judicial system out of here this morning. Uh, mm -hmm. Judge Walker, could you please come forward? Mm -hmm. you could. And it's tab number 11, authorization to approve an agreement with the Georgia Department of Human Services and authorize a new position as a part-time <coughs> case manager to be funded through DFCS and the judge court. Uh, I'm sorry, in the juvenile court in the amount of $31,200 and amend the budget and authorize the chairman to sign all related documents. Judge Walker. The state of Georgia has received a million dollars through the administration of children and families to address issues with regard to infants and toddlers that are born exposed to substance use. We have developed a program called Baby Steps Recovery to get out into the community and try to get up front and reduce the number of uh, women who are pregnant and using to make sure that women who are pregnant and using are in treatment and to reduce the exposure of the infant and toddler. We have gotten a lot of support and acclaim across the nation for the program. The state is now requesting to put someone in with Gabe so that they can be trained in an effort to replicate this all over the state. So this is uh, something that will come from the state. The county will benefit from it, but the purpose is to train the state and what we've done with the QIC grant so that it can go statewide. And the plan is, in fact, to implement what we're doing statewide. We're not sure how, we're not sure when, but as part of Family First Prevention Services Act that goes into effect in 2021, this is the type of work that they want to do, which is early preservation work to keep families together. So the impact to the county is that we need space. We will use some additional office supplies. We have that in our budget. So other than space, <coughs> there's not any specific financial impact because we've already budgeted for uh, Gabe, for uh, her staff, and, uh, for her, not for her staff, she is the staff, <laughs> for her needs. Yes. Any questions from the board, Vice Chairman Ross? Yes. It, is it almost time? Almost time. Almost time. Um, you, again, your, your, your <coughs> efforts in what you contributed to the county, to the state, to the nation, um, in your usual uh, capacity, it, it's appreciated. Now, I'm just leaning on every word, like, oh my, it's almost over, but it's appreciated. So uh, I won't, it will come a time for that, those comments, but I want to acknowledge just in case you don't come before us again before the end of the year. That being said, um, this is necessary uh, to extend further. You said space. Where is it going to be at? CSB or somewhere here locally in the courthouse? It'll be here in the courthouse. It'll be in the courthouse. So you got capacity. Okay. Mm -hmm. Are you? Okay. Thank you. Um, Commissioner Carlton. Um, Judge Walker, this part-time person, will they need um, transportation from the county as well to do their job? Because this is case management as well, right? For kids. The, how we're handling it, uh, we may be able to cover some of that expense through our grant until our grant is over because we've still got money in that grant. We have to spend it all down until September 30th. But out of that line item budget, we can also use the, the transportation for reimbursement for mileage to the extent that we need to. Okay. That's what I want to know. I yield. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Parker. All right. Thank you so much, Judge Walker, Thank for you. coming in. All right. Uh, Ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to pivot back and also board of commissioners, I'll pivot back to our presentations. We have a presentation. It is uh, from SPLOS. We're going to go with our SPLOS update first. Mr. Terry Gable, would you please come forward? Yeah, we're, we're trying to keep everything tight going forward. Yeah, we're trying. Just give us a high level. You just, you're going to just give us a high level view? Uh, uh, yes, I will do my best to get the high level view. Okay. <laughs> the highlights. <laughs> the highlights. Um, good morning, Madam Chair, members of the board. My name is Terry Gable. I'm with more on the Belly, and I'll be giving the um, November SPLOS report uh, again. Um, so, again, we'll be doing September revenues, work through October. With about 30 months in the, in the overall program, and time permitting, David's got a, a short presentation on vendors. <coughs> um, if that uh, if that exists, so as far as uh, invoices paid to date, we have approximately thirty two point two million dollars for the program. Uh, Fire and EMS uh, jumped up close to uh, a couple million dollars this month, past month, and so did transportation. 
uh, that's got us up, and then parts stayed roughly about the same as they had been. So with that, we'll move into the the revenues. Um, the revenues, fortunately, are staying solid. Uh, they're they're still above the projection line. Uh, we're at probably about one hundred thirty thousand dollars over projections. It came down a little bit from last month. Uh, some of that probably to be expected, but hopefully, heading into the holidays, uh, we'll see an uptick uh, like we've seen in the past. And of course, finishing out last year three, hopefully, we'll stay uh, in the black and, and see some solid numbers. There's the raw numbers: two point one six nine million for the month of September. Uh, we we have an overage. We're showing overage for just the for year three uh, so far at one point two million dollars. That's uh, Money's that are above our projections. And then for their overall program, the 30 months, we've collected $62.87 million. Um, oh, he's going. Keep going. I thought I didn't have a quorum. But okay. Commissioner Mitchell is right there. Um, $62.8 million is the total collections. Uh, if you look, compare that to the projections, overall in the program, we're about $2.5 million over projections. So we're looking real good there. On our bond obligations, uh, we made the, the small payment back in October. Uh, the first payment, and of course the biggest payment of the program, is April 1st, and it's at $18.9 million uh, for this year. So once we get through that, um, the payments, the, the amounts will start dropping somewhat. Okay, just so quickly going through some project updates. Uh, the digital radio system, good news uh, with that is, is Motorola's finally gotten uh, the, the signed document has been signed, SEC and SHPO. Um, they don't have in hand, it's got to be advertised for 30 days. We're in that period now, and I think they're anticipating getting that letter around uh, December 9th or 10th. Uh, at that point, weather permitting, they'll stack that last tower in South Douglas, um, and that'll complete all the towers. Everything else at that tower is done at that site, except to stack that tower, and he thinks he can do that in two weeks. So with that, after the first of the year, the chief of them, I think, consensus was to go ahead and do a, an immediate test uh, early on and go live uh, the first week in January. So we're, we're getting real close to getting the thing kicked off. And then the final, the final uh, test will be done in the spring when the foliage is on the trees, as we've talked about. So good news there with the, uh, with the, the document from CHIPO and SEC being signed. Uh, just real, real quick with the ambulance and the fire truck, both the ambulance, um, the chief and I are doing a final te uh, inspection on it uh, this month, and we sh should be expect expecting delivery this year. And then the fire truck will be in the spring of next year. They'll start fabrication, and we'll be looking at picking it up, um, hopefully delivery in early summer <coughs> the fire truck. Staff vehicles are completed now. We've, we've taken delivery of those. And that, for right now, wraps up our, <coughs> our fire and EMS. Real quick, we'll run through transportation. The resurfacing uh, is, is going on very well. We see that Matthews made good progress in September and October when it stayed so hot, uh, but they're about 80% complete with the resurfacing, the 2019 resurfacing, and shouldn't have a problem finishing it by the end of the year. The payment evaluations, um, more than enough Billy staff got with Miguel staff Friday and did the training. Uh, we finally got everything set up. They got the license in. So that was turned over to Miguel on Friday. And Mike Malcolm will be available for Miguel as, as time as he moves through this year. If he's got questions and needs any assistance on it. Stuart Mill Road um, is one, one of our intersections. It is in the... Uh, really the right-of-way stage now. Miguel has that um, and is working on titles, title searches and appraisals now. So we'll have to work through that uh, into probably the first part of next year. We'll get that completed and we'll be hopefully ready to let that project uh, in the spring of next year. <coughs> right Star and John West, Miguel has that in his queue to the left. Everything is done and ready to go. Uh, just a matter now getting it through, purchasing, getting it advertised for bid. And then, of course, Sweetwater Church is, is the, um, we already have a, a contractor on board there. We're just waiting on the notice to proceed. And Miguel's setting up a pre-construction with them. As soon as that's done, we'll give them a notice to proceed, and they'll be, you'll see some work going on on the 
uh, intersection, obviously, with depending, I mean, depending on what. <coughs> and then finally, with Chapel Hill Road, uh, SEI is working, we met with them about a couple of weeks ago. They're still in the design stage with this, preliminary stage, and Miguel's getting cost comparisons from them also. Um, but our goal with that is, is to get him right away plans by the end of the year. Um, once final decisions are made with Miguel and any information is going to be provided to the board. But right now, everything's moving along uh, with the design and, and trying to get uh, Broadway plans completed for it. Highway 5 uh, at Douglas Boulevard. This will be done by the on call consultant, and Miguel's real close to getting a task order set up for that. Once, once he gets it approved by the board, we'll start design on that hopefully. This year, if not, uh, it'll be the first of the year they'll get started with it. And Post Road Bridge, no change there. Um, we, Miguel is making sparks with the one parcel that he, he had to acquire for an easement, uh, but we, we're making progress with that now, so it shouldn't be any hiccups with that. It's when the, uh, the contractor is ready to come in and start next year. Our sidewalk projects are moving along uh, quite well. Miguel. Uh, with Lithia Springs, we had one parcel left. That was the church. Um, sh it should should be uh, too long before they get that closed out. And then Chestnut Lodge was. We had four parcels there that were presented to the board for approval. Options on those, and he's moving forward with with closing those. And then Manchester High, we are still working with uh, G Dot and getting the permit for to do the sidewalk out there. The design is pretty much complete. Uh, but they, they did come out with some comments and it's required going back and looking at the plans uh, and for the designer make a few changes in the plan. <coughs> we'll keep you updated on that as we move through that, that process. Whitestone Color is well on the way. Um, I got a couple <coughs> shots here. Um, so they've, they've gotten started and um, we'll continue weather oh. permitting through. Uh, Can you go back to the first slide on Whitestone? You want to go back now? That, that's not the new cover. Now they had removed, that's the old cover they had removed. That's the first thing they did when they got out there, got the site set up and, and removed the old pipe, what was what was left. And then this is a more recent, or a recent picture. Um, had everything removed, got it cleaned up and ready to move, go to the next phase of the project. <laughs> Our street lights, um, we are moving forward with that, still waiting on uh, the I-20 uh, permit from GDOT to start that work, and then uh, we also have the board approved another, another purchase order for some uh, additional locations for street lights, and we'll be um, keeping the board uh, abreast on that as we move through and get everything set up with Greystone and George Pilot. Mm -hmm. Highway 92 at Mount Vernon. Uh, GDOT has a contractor on board. We're waiting on, uh, I don't know if you guys got any updates, we're waiting on them to start work any day now uh, to get that much needed signal up and in place. So good news there. Highway 92 at Riverside. This will be, again, it'll be one of the on-call consultants that'll do a uh, a preliminary design and a scope on this project and make decisions on how to move forward with it once Miguel gets them on board. And of course the Lee Road widening project, we've got that on on our schedule now. Uh, funding identified for it. Uh, the plan right now is to let this project uh, June, June of next year. And I had this last time, I didn't get to do the uh, presentation, but those are the new two new dump trucks that were uh, Miguel got with for maintenance with the snow plows on it. Nice. All right, with that, we'll um, mm -hmm. we'll move into parts. So uh, this past month, we took bids on Deer Lick, uh, and they've been evaluated and presented to the Parks Committee. And on the agenda, we've got a recommendation for. Uh, an award and that was also for the multi-purpose rec center the same and it's on the agenda for award and also the senior center and the good news is that the bids came in we had good bids good participation and we've got obviously got some good bids that were that were uh, awardable 
and feel good about where the numbers are and it's also coming in pretty good for the overall parks budget so good news there it looks like bids are the prices seem to be coming down some from what the architects are telling me we originally had these uh priced as far as our estimates go back uh, early in the year when we were up around 250 dollars a square foot <coughs> and the, they're telling me and based on the numbers we're seeing the prices prices of stuff are is coming down some so that's to be in our favor and then with the last two we have bill art and fair play these are the two that we did take bids on there on hold till we get all the numbers evaluated and gets uh, board makes a decision on moving forward with those but uh, we're it certainly looks better now than it did um, a couple months ago when we were trying to anticipate what the bids were coming in. <coughs> and I believe gears got wrapped up on his equipment for 2019. Um, we may have a little bit of money left there. And with that, <coughs> quick overview. Um, I'll take questions and then we can get David up. Any questions? Yeah, I'll be quick. Um, you can go with the Hey, I'm here. All right, I'll be, I'll be quick. Um, we appreciate that. And, and again, we're, we're getting used to this, but you still have to say it for the record for the, for the public, though sure. we do get our briefings prior to this. Um, two things. Um, Parks and Rec, obviously, I'm, I'm encouraged by that process. Um, I, I know there's always an assertion that we may be over budget because of costs, and now we're under budget because of costs. And we can't control that. You guys do the best you can in negotiation. Obviously, we, we write good RFQs, RFPs. We put them out there, and the market does what it does. But um, I, I, I want to acknowledge, um, Commissioner Mitchell, you guys, for, for, you know, again, you benefit from that, that good look. Because at the end of the day, it's just like with the jail, did you come in on time, on budget, on the $120 million? It did. But certain parts of that jail was over, some of it was under. We got plenty of books to validate that. So I want to, I don't want, sometimes I hear that, okay, the community center went over a little bit. And this compromise is like, no, it's all relative. <clears throat> Nothing downstream is promised. Nothing is guaranteed. It's whatever the dollars will allow based on the, bro the overall economy. So if, it's, if it allows you to get good rates, great, we can do more. If it doesn't, you can't. But that's one of the things that what we decided as a board was not to commit to something that we knew we could not deliver. That's why we came up with these categories and percentages. That's all we're held to. Those projects, that if we have enough money, we'll get to it. But it's based on, hey, whatever's in ahead of it, if it knocks something out down there, well, then you do another sploss. You get to it. But I, I, I want to acknowledge that because this is, we're about to go into the turn here. Um, obviously, our big payment is due what? April what? First. April 1st. April 1st is our big payment. And so um, I, I guess I want to acknowledge the process that you guys are going through. And this is something I brought up with Commissioner Mitchell this morning, which is, okay, you got a little savings. Don't go down there reaching and trying to accelerate things from a schedule perspective if you haven't mapped the cash. Or you're going to be right back in the same place. So can you speak to that and what your realization is, how we avoid that? Uh, well, again, we, you know, we've developed the... Uh, uh, the monthly schedule and that certainly has helped if you know i mentioned it last time as far as tying tying the uh the cost to the schedules of the projects and we're looking at them very close uh the numbers certainly help helps that because all these these vertical structures that we're, we're talking about now we're in year four when things were going to tighten up um but it's helped the parks budget we're going to monitor it very close as we in, in forecast it out to where we're at um and make decisions as far as moving forward when we can pick up the next the next project. Yeah, and, and that again, that's important. I know how again you've got staff who like you guys just want to move stuff. Look, we're doing work. Look, we're busy. Look what we're delivering. But if you don't keep up with that math, it's going to get off. And it's like, no, you, you can't get ahead. I understand. We may have a delay. There's called slack in project management. Everything is not on a critical path, but you can put everything on a critical path if you try to throttle it. So it's one of those, like, come on, staff, work with the schedule, stay with the schedule to the program directors. You guys, don't be trying to pull stuff up to show, look how busy we are, look what we're delivering, look what we can squeeze in here. You, Mark created a schedule to begin with by design. He laid it out based on cash flow. And to the spirit of that, yes, we reforecast. But if you guys get so thirsty and want to deliver, look look at us. Look at look how well, you're going to blow this. There's no way around it. We're going to go through the exercise we just went through to try to, like, come on, guys, back up. So I'm going to emphasize, the, to your point, the lesson learned is, Stick to the schedule. 
it's cool if the environment or the economy causes us to have to slow something down, it's okay. If it comes in a little bit more than we anticipate, we can't control that. The cost of materials is what it is. We don't have our own materials anywhere. So we have to buy that rate. It's whatever it is. Let's be mature about this, like we talked about in the budget. Let's have a, a very seasoned conversation about financials. We did talk about the, the media wasn't there, but we recognize that we, you know, some of our narratives get, get off and it, 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 it almost unveils <coughs> that we don't really comprehend the full picture of how this works. Um, but I want to appreciate you guys' efforts and stuff. And so thank you. Now, I yield back. Okay. Thank you so much. All right. Thank you. You said David. Thanks, guys. Short purpose. Just good. You could with your presentation. All right, thank you. I'm good. Almost afternoon, uh, commissioners. Mm -hmm. um, I'm David Good, communications director for the SPLOS program. And behind you, you see our SPLOS vendors um, update. Uh, we, we are now at 100 total vendors, and, and that's going to be 100 total vendors working on 71 uh, projects. Of those 71 projects, 41 of them are active projects, and 30 of them have reached their completion. And of these um, vendors, 66%, about two-thirds of the total vendors are local, which basically means uh, both Douglas County and within 30 miles of Douglas County. The rest are either out of the state or out of that 30-mile uh, piece. Um, and right now, we do get a chance to talk to businesses, go to different events in order to reach people and reach businesses who want to do business with Douglas County. Um, next up, you will see the total amount that the local um, uh, receiving from the county is about $21,000, I mean $21 million, and that represents about 48% of the SPLOS. Um, the other $22 million you know, is relatively, most of it is packed into, <coughs> excuse me, most of it is packed into Motorola, uh, which is right now showing that roughly 15 to $16 million within, within this project. Uh, then we are actually in within the year, middle of year three. Um, as soon as April turns over, we'll be at the turn and we'll be going into the latter half of the SPLOS. And the last part is actually our minority participation. And, of the, and this is for only active projects. And minority participation is about 47% of, of all those active projects. So you saw that list of 41, of uh, those 41 projects, 47% uh, of them have minority participation. And one thing I did want to touch on is that in the last meeting, um, a couple of commissioners were asking about how we come up looking for these minority participations. Um, the state of Georgia has a website where they talk about DBEs, and I'm able to go to that website as well as the Chamber of Commerce just to see if these companies are uh, minority companies. And that's how I came up with that list. And with that, I'll take any further questions. Any questions? Sounds good. All right, thank you very much. Okay, good. Thank yeah. you. Oh, Commissioner? Yeah, just. Oh, mm -hmm. Real quick, uh, uh, it may be Madam McCarthy. Um, all right, so you go to the state and you look at what they do, you look at the chamber. What are we doing internally within the county? And I know you're trying to keep up with this as it comes online, but what, how are we going to approach um, through business license or whatever occupational permit? How do we approach capturing that information internally within the county and, and, and really? all the companies that are uh, already on the books, what are we going to do about that? How do we clean this up? Because I know it's non-existent. It was never a real focus on that. But what is the approach going forward to clean it up? What is what is the new direction? Vice Chair, this is Bill Peacock, the Purchasing Director. I'll try to address that. Uh, as we've discussed in our Purchasing Oversight Committee meetings, we're working with uh, IS to develop a um, uh, 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 the availability for us to uh, designate DBEs directly on the um, vendor application when they're submitted either online or on paper. Today we don't capture that. We don't have a field within the system to put that in. And my staff is working with IS to have that developed so that we can do that. Uh, as far as the historical records, uh, we really don't have any way to go in and, and value a business, whether it's a DBE or not, um, in a very minute way. Uh, we do have some fields that say uh, whether or not they're DBE women owned and different things, but it doesn't capture all of the different categories of DBEs. <coughs> so we are working to do that, but we don't have that available today. Um, 
but it is something that's in process. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Thank you so much, and I know Commissioner Crofton is the chairman of that committee. Y'all are pressing forward, so thank you. All right, thank you, Mr. Good. Uh, Board of Commissioners, yep. we have just a few more things. Believe it or not, we're further along than it's probably you think, so we, I'm just going to push through I'll it. And certainly, if you could just minimize your questions, if you could now, but I'm not going to certainly restrict you. Okay, we are now on tab number six, which I believe is just a discussion. It's a pro it's approval for beer and wine sales. It's alcohol license for Moe's Southwest Grill at 80, uh, 894 Thornton Road, Lithia Springs. Georgia, and that would be Tammy Cardinamar. Is that right? Um, yes, Madam Chair. Um, won't be here tomorrow night, but uh, Tammy's got all the, the materials together. They go through the RAS certification. The applicant was, wasn't able to be here at the last one, last meeting, because he has to be here in person. So he will be here tomorrow in person for the public hearing. Okay. Thank you, um, Manager Roberts. All right. We're going to move on to tab. Any questions for us? Tab number seven, memorandum of an understanding with the Douglas County Economic Development. Development uh, Authority. Uh, legal Department, Attorney General. Uh, I'll take that okay. to start off with Madam Chair. Administrator. Um, so we have an existing agreement that was approved on uh, August 20th with the Development Authority. This is to spend the hotel motel tax funds from that were remaining left over from 2015 through 18. Now, the agreement that you have on its attached to the agenda is the one that was approved in November of 2018. That actually has been revised, so we inadvertently put that agenda, I mean, that uh, MOU on the computer. So the new one, but you do have the list, the task list, um, that was also approved on July 22nd. The only difference is, is uh, the tourism department has revised the list to add the pillars that were discussed at our last meeting, and they show the percentages of each pillar that that would be spent out of these line items. Um, so we've had this on the agenda a couple of times, back and forth. We, we, last time, I think we were trying to get through the chamber. So this is just for the TCT funds from 2015 through 18. And then the chairman and I had had discussions with the vice chair about proceeding with this agreement to spend these funds by the end of the year. Mm -hmm. With the development authority. Mm -hmm. Any questions? With the development authority. Under yep. the current yep. agreement. Yeah, uh, yeah and I just be, be respectful to, to my peers. This is a discussion only item. It's just you need to look at what this is. And I appreciate the kind of administration. The point was not to necessarily go through the chamber. Um, yeah, we lost some time on that because uh, our goal was to avoid that altogether. Uh, but uh, one point is this was be, to be facilitated by Chris Pumphrey, but not necessarily through um, the structure of, of Colin. That's not what the expectation was. So I, I want y'all to make sure y'all look at what this is that we're discussing because, in other words, Colin has a budget. Stay focused. The chamber has a budget. Stay focused. The 400000 was above and beyond. That needs to be addressed. And what I wanted Chris Pumphrey was to be here for him to speak to, do you understand what we're asking for? We don't need no tra mistranslation of what the intent was. We don't need no, no slight. It's like, Colin stays on her current budget. She's fully loaded. Deliver what you're supposed to be delivering. Chamber, focus on yours. This is 400 above and beyond. It's over here to the side. How are y'all going to handle that? And that, that, that's why this is the discussion only. So there's no need to belabor this. This is unless y'all want to weigh in. Uh, but read what, what's here. Thank you. Okay. Commissioner Crofton. Okay. So just so <coughs> that I'll have an understanding that MOU that's attached is, is not the right MOU? No, that's just been, it was uh, amended in uh, August of uh, 2018. <coughs> it was amended to add the 469000 at the time is what it was, which is now 399000 Okay. So this MOU take out and what should be in its place is the MOU for the, for the development authority? Yes. Well, it's, it's essentially the same. It just, instead of that 170 it has the 399 to it. Okay. It has the 399 and then the list that's below here is attached. Is a tax too. Okay, I see what you're saying. So just take out the the value. 
but essentially it would say the same. Stand yes. with the Economic Development Authority. Yes. To spend the hotel motel tax that was accumulating. Yes, based on the project work list that's attached to the agenda, which was approved back in <coughs> July or August, July, I think. All right. Thank you. Okay. All right, we'll move on to the next Thank item. You. Item. I need to explain oh. it. Okay. Yeah, uh, but, but again, um, well, the July did not take into consideration the moves since then. And that's why I'm, I'm like, that's why this can't be voted on tomorrow or there's an expectation. I need to look at this. Um, when we started with that, that was $25,000. And it was a focus on Pillar 1. All right. That was gotten rid of. And now it's the full 400 399 that's Pillar 1. Where is that being addressed? It's not. Right? Let's this, this be clear on what this is and what the board was looking to hear. So that's what I'm saying. Okay, is Chris Pumpkin's not here, and I don't want to put you in an offer of place, Mark, but the development authority needs to be here. Do y'all understand what we're asking for to be fulfilled here? And you can't answer that. Um, no, you, evidently you, I do not. Yes. Yeah. It's okay. Nope, nope. No, I didn't know it was only for pillar one for this 399000 but we can change that to whatever the board, whatever the board desires. But, but, but that was what we, I said in the last meeting, and that's what, uh, on this one, I mean, I appreciate it. I appreciate District 2, um, uh, Mr. Pierce's comment about communication. Like, are y'all hearing what we're trying to get done? It's like we've been trying to communicate and we're wanting, I'm having to keep clean, like you're still not there yet. Come on, guys, don't make this hard. Let me ask you a question, um, Vice Chair, I'm going to let you finish. Before. Yeah, yeah, I, I mean, I don't want to belabor it, but that, that's why I keep pushing. I'm listening to the commentary, like y'all still are not, uh -huh. y'all are not on the same page. That's why I was, I was since to say, make this a discussion only to my peers respectfully, look at this so that we can get be done with this. We got 45 days to get this done. We got one more meeting to approve this and be done and let whomever, Chris Pumphrey, go do what he do. But I want y'all to be clear so there's no disappointment, no <coughs> objectives, no frustration, no any of that, because it's not that hard. We just need the support of staff, the cooperation to help us line this up to build an objective that the state said y'all should be doing anyway. And that's all we're asking to do. We're not touching existing operations. Leave them alone. That's what I'm saying. We're acting like we didn't bring this up, that it's not supposed to be business as usual. Just, that, that's... Let's go. Okay. We're good. Um, mark pillar one is what? What is pillar one? So there's five pillars. <coughs> um, pillar one is African American history and culture. Pillar two, outdoor recreation and sports. Pillar three, food and drink and Georgia grown. Pillar four is music and film. Pillar five, iconic Georgia locations. Okay. So I'm just trying to make sure I understand what's true. So you're saying 399 to pillar one? Yeah. Which is African American. Mm -hmm. That's what we've been talking about all, from day one. Yeah. That's the first I've heard. I guess. Mm -hmm. See it that way. I yes. thought we were going to look at it and just make sure that it was evenly distributed. Evenly. Mm -hmm. All right, so let me. No. The $25,000 when we first started this was supposed to be dedicated to that. Right? There yes. was, and it is. All right, stay with me. But then when we went through all of this, it says we can't do that. We got to do it this way. See, this, this no, guys. This ain't going to move from, from, like, no. It went from 25 to 400. It's like, okay. You mean, it's now like, okay, we'll just give this to the 25. It's like, no. It, we could have been done with this if it wasn't for all the maneuvering, all the power moves, all the try to shape this. Don't, like, let this go. Let this go right now. I understand. That's why I said, look at this. I knew we are all on different pages. Discussion only. You, that's what we've been saying, pillar one. You didn't even know what pillar one was. It's like, are y'all, and then you want to push a marketing plan that doesn't, that was the point that uh, Madam Carthen brought up. Y'all don't even know what it is. So we're holding you accountable to the very thing that you're supposed to be doing now so we want to scramble and bring a marketing plan to sort of like backslide this thing. It's like, and then we were like, okay, we're going to push to 25. We thought this was like, no, guys. Don't let them say, we want to push this right now. Let it go. I just, what I said, y'all asked me. I said, just make it a discussion only item. Look at this. You know, we get back together and make a decision. But not, not go back and pull every tape. I didn't spoke on this. And if you were listening, I, I I was hitting it. Yes, pillar one. Yes, yes, we were dancing around this. 
Ken's point was, the county attorney was like, well, they ain't going to do it. The chamber, I said, let them say no. We get it. Were y'all not paying attention to that dialogue? I mean, I get the point. It's like, okay, but those in the room who could hear, you know like, what this was about. Right? No, they, the chamber doesn't want to take that. I'm like, that's fine. Don't put them in that spot. I had to apologize. I talked to Sarah Ray. I said, look, this wasn't about you. This is our own internal shenanigans. Uh-huh. Stop. Let this go. Let it go. Commissioner, me and you will meet, uh, Vice Chairman, we'll need to meet because this will not be an all or nothing. Um, we'll talk about it, but of course, we need to be fair with this. And I believe, Mark, is it more than 25000 allocated for that um, pillar one? Uh, between what's shown on here is 25%. So what is 25% of that, please? Uh, it'd be 100, about 100000 100000 I'm just saying, Commissioner, I just want to compromise so we can move forward. We've been talking about this for... Three, once, once you get a B in your bonnet, I mean, my bonnet is clear. I just want to make sure we can move on. We've been talking about this for about three meetings, and we just saying, okay, guys, back and forth. We went, we've gone from 25000 to 100000 I just want to make sure going forward that it's balanced all over, the, you know, that it's balanced going forward for all the pillars. And uh, I guess we didn't really. I didn't. Go ahead. I didn't we, we really didn't, uh, I guess, uh, in the past, didn't give a lot of credit to pillars that we didn't give a it, it's justice. But going forward, I want to make sure that it is clear that we will make sure that all the pillars are evenly distributed going forward in this county. But today, we just can't go with all <coughs> of the three names at one pillar. That is just totally unfair. Um, so it's gone from 25000 to 100000 I think that's more than fair. And the Commissioner, Vice Chairman, we'll, we can meet offline, but I really need to push this through. I've been waiting for three meetings. I, 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 I didn't yield, but I appreciate it, Madam Chair. I got to. Okay, I, I get it. You leave your existing operations who still have not acknowledged. So go back to the percentage that the chamber and this product group, they haven't addressed it in their current operation. For three years, aggregate, this is just an above bell. This allows you to catch up with something that in your current operations you are not addressing. You're being convenient in the sense that we're calling it out. Like, well, you haven't addressed it already. You got existing funds that are currently going on that's not acknowledging it. But I just said, let the board vote. This one is like, no. Yeah. Let the board vote. Let okay. everybody vote their conscience on what they think the numbers going to be and how this plays out. Nobody was trying to belabor this, but uh, I, I, I'm going to disagree with that hundred. It's like, no, that's not what we've been talking about. We've been working on it. You guys have been in the meetings. You've been in the rooms. And all of a sudden, we're going to act like what's going to be fair when you have acknowledged it to this point, and it's like we're trying to catch up with something that wasn't acknowledged. So it's like the work that's been in there, and at one more time, this staff has tried to redirect this thing that could have made it very, very convenient. And now it's got to this point. Like, no, you can't just like, okay, we'll, we'll, just, we'll give you this. That's, that's not being fair. That's not even honoring the fact that, the, what was it, the pleasure of the board? You weren't respecting the pleasure of the board. To your point, we shouldn't be here. I said that in the last meeting. So, but it's not a, a being a bonnet. It's like, no, you, you may not want to do it this way. It's respecting what the direction we want to go. It's knowledge and not trying to give me a last minute hand and say, well, okay, you ain't got no choice. What you gonna do? It's like, oh no, we can play through this. And that's why like, it, it's, it's like, it's three years. Like we may want to revisit that. I shouldn't be here. I should, I should have a, lo a little bit more support. And it was only $25,000. And now you, you caused us to like really look at this thing like, oh boy, what's y'all doing over here? And it opened up a whole bigger picture that we didn't know that, that what you currently was doing was not lined up with the state. It's illegal, but they allowed us to do it. So it opened up a whole different, world. like, okay, wait, we got to clean this thing up. So that's why I'm like, well, if you would have supported us what we did, we'd been done. But now we've gotten into this thing, it's like, well, if we had a little bit more support, we wouldn't even be here. I yield. Thank you so much, Vice Chair. All right. I see your hand. You so, so where are we then? You know, <laughs> see, see, I mean, right, exactly. So, so somehow, somehow, some way, we gotta at least acknowledge where we are or where we go. So, the question still on the table is, where are we? Where we're we going? And what is that? So. Um, and, and, and it's what we're doing. <coughs> so, I don't mean that, because if we just walk away now, 
then I don't think you have any clear directions as to what this really is, unless I'm missing something. I don't know. So <coughs> I'll, I'll, I'll yield to that point, and then I may have some other comments, but I just want to make sure that we are all you know, going in one direction, because it doesn't sound like we are. So it should just be discussion. One of the reasons why it was brought up is okay. because these pillars were never, yeah, never addressed. Okay. The tourism um, department, I'm assuming, just did not know. And so I wanted to educate them. Mm -hmm. And so I brought it to their attention. Mm -hmm. And I at least wanted them to say, okay, I acknowledge that you did this. They did it way after the fact. Got I, I got a lot of pushback mm -hmm. that I wasn't expecting the under commission mm -hmm. from the staff of the tourism department with mm -hmm. that. So I brought it to um, Commissioner oh, Robinson's attention <coughs> and we looked at it and found out it was wrong. The structure of it was wrong all the way around. Mm -hmm. And so um, our attorney has brought to our attention how we can straighten it out. Mm -hmm. And straightening it out, it won't be done overnight. So Understood. I haven't been in all of the discussions, mm -hmm. but it seems like we can still carry out the mission. We'd just be doing it through the Economic Development Authority. But we need to discuss that. Okay. Right. As we need to discuss that, and we need to discuss how these pillars will be addressed. Got it. And the main one being African American history and culture and tourism, because it's never been addressed. Ever. We've spent money in these other categories. Food, drink, and Georgia grown. We've spent money in food and drink, mm -hmm. outdoor recreation. We have a high range of festival. Mm -hmm. We do put it in other segments. But that one segment, Douglas County has never addressed. And so being a new commissioner, mm -hmm. and I am an African American woman, everybody can see that, we do have those parts that we want people to know about that exist here in Douglas County. Mm -hmm. So that was my reason for at least pulling it out. Well, just putting before we we got uh, again that one pillar, and I realize you said it's been years, and I realize it has been years. But can we make it all up in this one moment? Uh, we certainly twenty five thousand was the, the first uh, suggestion or first gesture, and we're at a hundred thousand. And I'm just trying to what I'm trying to do is leverage to make sure the others don't fall short. <coughs> certainly, I, I vindication belongs to the Lord, and I don't have time to look at what happened in the past, but what I'm trying to do is make it for, uh, right going forward. Uh, 100,000 is quite enough, and then going forward, still we want to make sure that, that is, there's some equilibrium <coughs> between all categories. I think what I'm doing is feeling kind of punished for, for some things that happened before my arrival. But since we picked up on it, I appreciate you, Commissioner Carthen, for taking a deep dive and looking at it. 25,000 was the initial request, 100,000, that's, that's about four years worth of and going forward, it would probably be 100000 instead of zero. And I'm, I'm so sorry for what happened prior years. And I really do, as an African-American woman, that's also, I understand. Um, I just want to go forward. We can just go forward with the boat tomorrow and just see where we go from here because, guys, we, I'm, we're running out of time. We can talk about it still. This is an opportunity for discussion. Lisa, uh, hopefully by tomorrow before this arrives, we can still talk individually. I want to meet with the vice chairman. And we'll chat and see what because I'm looking at compromising at this moment. Yes. One last, and that's why I said I want to come back and just comment when we kind of got some resolve where we're going. So I defer to uh, to me or the chair to say what will, what's your direction? If there is a, if you have any direction, or <coughs> if that is that your sentiment? I wouldn't say we vote on it because I feel the, you know, I feel that others at the table want to have some say in it. We need to discuss it because everybody may not be on board yeah. with that. So we do need to have a discussion as opposed to trying to push it to a vote. That's just my sentiment since you asked. 
I'm going to say as the chair, chair of what? Not the tourism. Oh, not the chair of tourism. No. Who is it? Okay. <laughs> we don't have a chair. I'm a chair of uh, purchasing. Okay. 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 All right. Okay. okay. All right. Because I, I guess the reason I said that because of it came, that this whole exactly. thing came about from your discussion right. and your de your deliverables and your discussion with the whole maker. So that's why, I mean, okay. long chair to mean make you a chair of something that you're not. However, uh, okay, I guess, so um, with that, I, I guess, Madam Chair, that's kind of your call. I mean, but it doesn't appear as though it's ready for a vote. But I think if you just want to make cast a vote, I don't know, I'm just testing the, the, the waters, but. Commissioner, yeah. how do you, what do you, do you have any input on? And it was, uh, it was my understanding, it was guys that who, um, you can't undo what's already been done. Um, I didn't, we didn't even know about pillars <laughs> until this all came up. Um, and probably the people with the tourism board did not do that. <coughs> so uh, I don't think they would have deliberately um, misallocated, whatever. But um, I don't see how in the world 400000 to be spent between now. Is it the end of the year they have to spend it? Mm -hmm. On just one category. Uh, so um, what we want, the whole purpose of it is to bring people to Douglas County. Mm -hmm. And I think we're kind of cutting off our nose just by our face if we just direct it to just one ethnic group. And that's just my opinion. Because we want everybody to come. Mm -hmm. uh, it's not a matter of, you know, making amends for past mistakes. You mm know, -hmm. I don't see the point of that. I'd like to go forward and correct it forward. I will, we'll discuss it and then we'll determine whether, I'll determine whether to be on the agenda tomorrow because I'm trying to feel the pulse of the board. We will be here for a while and I just, I'll just talk to y'all each individually and see where we go from here. We just, just adamantly say no, we'll, we got to keep pushing and, and when I say that we got to, we got to reach a uh, solution. We have to come to terms on this issue. Again, I can't take care of what happened in the past, but today I'm willing to, to think outside the box, open my brain and go forward with a, a viable solution, which I want to make sure moving forward everything is balanced. All right, uh, Board of Commissioners, I'm going to move on to, from this item, and then I'll just at least I'll get back with you on it a little later. Tab number eight is resolution conditionally consenting to the inclusion of certain Douglas County uh, Valorim, what is this, Valorim, um, real property taxes in the computation of the tax allocation increment for the city of Douglasville tax allocation district <coughs> number one downtown and north side to authorize the chairman and attorney to perform certain acts necessary to accomplish the intent of the resolution to provide an effective date for this resolution and for other purposes legal department yeah madam chair uh, we've had great discussions with the city of Douglasville based on the direction that we talked about before that is really there to add I talked to uh, Steve Leibowitz with our team, uh, I want to say Friday. He's meeting with the city tonight and has asked that we table this until the first meeting in uh, December. Their timetable is just they want to get it done by the end of the year, but there are a couple changes that he agreed to that were not uh, over the top, but he wanted to talk to his client so that we approve the resolution and item nine at the same time. So. Legal would be asking at the request of the city that 8 and 9 be continued and put on the agenda for the first meeting in December. Uh, and I think we'll have final versions of both documents by then. We are working very closely. I also talked to Susan Littlefield, uh, the city attorney, this morning, and she's aware of this request for tabling and she's fine with it. We're not artificially doing anything to them. So 8 and 9 would ask that you table and put it on the next agenda. Okay. Lisa, did you get that? Table eight and nine. All right, we just have a few more left. Tab number 14 is uh, authorization to amend the budget for communications and relations in the amount of $17,050 for the proceeds received from September 7th. And Sabrina. Um, so, all this is, Madam Chair, is we always allow Rick's department to run a deficit for the September Saturdays because we don't want to bring a check for you guys to amend each time. 
So we just kind of track it, and once we get all the checks, Rick gives me a list, I make sure we have all the funds, and we're just submitting his budget, giving it back for all the um, sponsors and food vendors for September Saturday. Okay, pretty self-explanatory. All right, any questions from the board? So how, yes. Yes. Did you look like what groups? Net, net, we, what was the check again? It was $17,050. It was split up, it was $14,950 from sponsors and $2,100 from food vendors. All right, so our sponsors uh, really, really, we carried that. Uh, <coughs> a good, uh, we, we did have one full pile. We, we had somebody who, um, obviously, um, we had Chick-fil-A, two sponsors of Chick-fil-A to sort of compromise that. That was unfortunate, and again, with the administration, we need to do a better job of coordinating. Uh, that was about $1,500 that could have went to that particular um, Chick-fil-A sponsor's bottom line, and that was the intent. We called two different ones, and it was like, oops. So do, just, just at, at, you know, let's make sure we synchronize. Uh, whoever is sponsoring us should get, um, if you've got other sponsors that are willing to pay for food, they should benefit from that. So um, do, do they know that. But okay, September Saturday, so what was that comparison to last year? Mm -hmm. You know, roughly. All right. One reason I'm saying is it growing? Is it? Is it? I mean, how is it doing in comparison? So I'd like to see for the past four years. Can we show? Yeah, I can get that for you. Yeah, just at your convenience. You don't have to belabor it. We got to keep moving. But just can you show that? Send me an email. The last four years, see, uh, in comparison to this year, are we growing? Are we expanding? And again, I'm, I'm still thinking about Commissioner Mo Pierce. Um, spay and neuter that he's he's startling us by you know so this um that's just a tease but 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 thank you for that day for your okay, okay. I, I did hear comments that the second saturday it was nothing but the vendors and the people in the booths it was a uh, very slack and we might want to reduce it down to one one weekend just for food oh. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't agree with that part of reducing it. I just think we just got to get better at what we present. I think the presentation is kind of has gone stale. <coughs> um, back to the numbers, though. Uh, give me the numbers again. You, you said the numbers were um, seventeen thousand fifty dollars, mm -hmm. and that was just broke up between uh, sponsors with fourteen thousand nine hundred. So seventeen thousand. Clear cash, or or I mean, after expense, I'm really trying to get to that bottom line. Oh, oh, what? Rick, can you answer how much it was fully expensed? I'm not sure on that number. Because these numbers sound great, but then I can do expenses. Yeah, some of it does come out of Rick's budget. Oh, but I'm not sure. So let me help us out. Yeah, sure, Commissioner Mitchell. What I can tell you is that in terms of our expenditures, mm -hmm. of what we spent, uh, total cost of 20500 okay. And our total income, mm -hmm. 17050 A oh, deficit. Small loss. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, a small deficit, which could be covered from what I have in my budget. Got it. Got it. So that's what I want. Okay. So, so not good. So now, what, what I can tell you is okay. the funding, um, the amount of funding that was donated to the school system, communities, and schools. We've already and donated something to them? Yes, it's, it's the vendor fees. What we do is this is a fundraising event for communities and schools, and we raised over $10,000. Okay, so let me make sure I get this right. So, so we go ahead and give the Based off the vendors, 17, oh, 17. Non-food vendors. Okay, okay, 17 is what we kind of do some some uh, percentages with the school system, not after expenses. So I don't understand, so I, okay, do we take the, do we take, yeah, yeah. <laughs> we take the whole ball of wax? Or do we just take the vendor side of things at 17 and we take that number, divide it amongst the, uh, the school system. Okay, well, help me out there. So I can. Sure. Okay. Sure. Non food vendors, but, um, the community marketplace. Okay. These are people, businesses, um, county booths. They're not charged. $75 is charged for non food vendor space. Okay. That money 
goes to communities and schools as a fundraiser. What is that money? What is that money? Sure, seventy-five dollars for your space. I don't just give me. Oh wait. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, I got you. <laughs> yeah, got you. You give me an estimate. It doesn't have to be exact. Oh, just oh. over over ten thousand dollars. Mm -hmm. Okay, we'll say yeah, like ten thousand five hundred. Got you. Okay. So that number is is divided or, or percentages or however it goes to the school system. That's what I'm asking. That number okay. goes to communities and schools. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So yeah. What percentage goes with? All of it goes to them, or mm -hmm. yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yes. I I just, yes. I got. To, I, I'm gonna just so we can say <laughs> that. Yeah. <laughs> so so, but still, I mean, the concern is so for us to work at a deficit is what I'm alluding to. I guess you guys probably understand what's going this to work at a deficit. And we still give you know this out as a, as a fundraiser to them. I, I agree, but I think we we gotta have some conversations about how do we restructure that to be that, that it makes sense for us to pay for it and still give the donations to the school. I mean, we 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 could you know pursue more sponsorships <coughs> in terms of cutting, cutting costs. That would be ideal. That's the perfect okay. way. That would be perfect if we can get more sponsors, then that would have more than twenty thousand dollars. And and it's still it's it's the deficit that we work from. So we lost money based on the numbers you just gave me, seventeen oh seventeen fifty versus me. Yes, roughly about three thousand dollars. We we had to come out of your call for out of the county's call for me to to do this. If I'm correct and rough, this is our rough math, and I think everybody's looking at the rough math. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. And that's what I'm a little concerned with. It's like we're trying to help raise money for the school system. I, I'm with you. I'm, I'm all for the kids and the school system and trying to, you know, put on a great event for them to help raise funds funds for them, but not at a cost mm -hmm. to the provider. If that makes sense. Mm -hmm. And it probably does it include the. Personnel. Oh yeah, because they they mm -hmm. the hours and mm -hmm. yeah yeah the hours and all that kind of stuff. So, but it's okay. I mean, we 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 we'll, we'll cross that bridge. But that there's got to be more conversation about that. Now, maybe I'm the only one that that's kind of no okay, right? Yeah, because that just that just seems a bit much. Because my my thoughts are, is how do we improve those two Saturdays a month? Because I see it's not where it needs to be. Because it, it's what we've been giving you county uh, citizens for these last 10 years, it's been the same thing and you're getting the same results, which is people are no longer attending, not not as many people are attending. And I think I think I shared that with you, I could look at the numbers <coughs> this time around and the numbers before. So I think we've got to pick up the pace, but we can't pick up the pace and, and it costs us to help raise money for the school system, I guess. Unless you guys are, if, if, if we want to give the money and we want to do that, I mean, we can. Um, I'm okay with it, but I just I don't think that's a good look. I think if, if everybody puts skin in the game, well, then they need to put their skin in the game. As well. <coughs> so, okay, thank you very much. <coughs> we'll, have, we'll, we'll, we'll come talk more about this in the program today. So. Okay, I yield back. Okay, thank you. We're gonna move on. Oh, so I guess the, the bigger, I'm sorry, but the bigger question was going to be, I was assuming we were trying to figure out, do we go ahead and donate the, the money? Uh, oh, yeah. That's right. That was a, the uh, topic on the table, so let me go back to that. So, me and you go back to that. I think, correct me wrong, the money you're referring to has already been donated. This is just to amend the budget to give the money back to the county. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. with the loss of about $3,000. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. Okay. Just want to make sure we acknowledge that. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, <laughs> Okay. <laughs> I understood. Very <laughs> good. And, and if you could, for me, Sabrina, if you could just say, has this been a trend over the last ten years that we use to make a profit? We, um, I don't think we've ever had no. a profit. Right. So this yeah. is this is what happens normally. Just Correct. want to make sure to give our communications director some sense of <laughs> comfort because he's yeah. probably thinking, man, they're losing on my watch, but it's yeah. been that way. Okay. I actually received a lot more. It looks like when I just pulled 18, we only had about $9,000 last year. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, in 2018, the amount raised for communities and schools was $13,275. Mm -hmm. So, 
and before that it was thirteen thousand three hundred and fifty five dollars. Um, you know, this time not as much. I have one question. Community in school, that's a different program from the public education from the Douglas County Board of Education, or is it? it communities and schools is different, right? Communities and schools of Douglas County is mm -hmm. their foundation like Okay. It's just a, a, a name for their, for their foundation, yeah. I guess, whatever. Mm -hmm. But it goes towards the public education. Yes. It goes yes. towards yes. The particular schools that's under the CI. For Douglas County schools. I don't think you understand the question. <coughs> so, Communities in School is the nonprofit arm yes. for <coughs> the Douglas County Board of Education? Or no? Yes. Is communities and Schools. For Douglas County is the nonprofit arm for Douglas County okay. school system. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Everybody's okay. I'm a All right. Tab number 15, authorization <laughs> to issue holiday bonuses. Uh, Sabrina, again, our you assistant think? director. Um, as you all know, a lot of years, sometimes the board is generous and there's money in the budget. They'll give a business <coughs> bonus to the employees. Um, in past years, it's been anywhere from 50 to 100 for part-time and full-time, or um, 150 to 200. This year, we had enough in the budget for 50 for part-time and 100 for full-time employees. Okay. Any questions from the board? All right. We'll move on. Tab number 16, authorization for the Douglas County Sheriff's Office to approve annual agreement with the Superior Water Services, Inc. for water treatment services for the central plant for December 1st. Um, 2019 through November 30th, 2020, for in the amount of $3,736.52, and authorize the chairman to sign all related documents. Major Holmes. This is the company that <coughs> monitors the water system for us with the chiller plants for our system. This amount is, uh, for the last few years, it's been the same, but this year uh, it's about a 4% increase. There's also a recommendation from our maintenance, Lamar Newburn, who oversees all this, to strongly go back with them even there is even though there is an increase because of the level of service they have provided for us over the years. Okay. Just one of those routines. Yes. Okay, thank you. Any questions for we'll move on to the next item, tab number seventeen. Mm -hmm. Tab number seventeen, authorization to approve the structure of the proposed five oh one C six technically known as Douglas County Travel and Tourism Corporation and to engage Malden and Jenkins to seek the IRS designation upon legal creation of said entity and authorize the chairman to sign our related documents. Attorney Bernard, is that yours? Madam Chair, I'm not sure if we're going forward on this or not. Uh, this was the carryover from the last meeting and had uh, something to do with the discussion collateral to item seven. Um, well, actually, so this is different from what I'm saying. This is sort of similar, but this is moving forward <coughs> 2020 and beyond. And I'm seven was 15, 16, 17, 18. Right. It got, I think at the last meeting, it sort of got shut down on whether or not y'all going to use a third party entity going forward. We're going to have our own. So I don't, legal is ready to do whatever this board tells it to do. And we have a prize from Malden and Jenkins. It was about a thousand, I think we sort of estimated five thousand just in case, but I think what Jennifer got was a thousand to submit the stat I mean submit the uh all the paperwork stuff to uh IRS. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Hi. And to the county attorney's point, I think you tied us to the discussion for the prior item, so you don't move on this tomorrow to you guys collectively resolve this, but give give assurance, being able to spend the money by the end of the year is not very hard. If anybody's been in um, PR, public relations, marketing, advertising, basically you're just a third party entity is basically engaging somebody over time and say, let's 10 months, you need to spend some money. It, it, this ain't that difficult. So I don't want anybody to think that we're boxed on this. This, this is not difficult. Um, you, you basically engage someone like any other consultant, any other professional services, any other retainer type of situation, this is not hard. Um, but I, I think that this needs to be thought through. So to, to the county administrator, I would like to tie this one to the prior one, um, you know, wait until we make a decision. But the intent is that there can be multiple agencies out there 
that can fulfill this. And that's really what we started with this, was to give other people the opportunity to expand the status quo, to allow other people to participate, not the same old people getting the, uh, the concentration of the money. It was, the whole point was to diversify the spend. Right, so I, I know there was a lot of messaging going on over the past three weeks, but if you were paying attention, it's been pretty consistent, at least from my position, uh, which is, okay, open it up, let more people have a, a chance to participate. It doesn't have to be one um, imperial view of how to market things. Let's just bring other people in here and allow them to promote it. So that's really what it was about, but Ken, to your point, uh, kind of turning to your point, I just say, Madam Chair, yield and, and Titus to whenever you um, decide. So no action on this until the others decide. Okay. Yeah. Commissioner. Uh, and I, I, I'm going to address the legal. Uh, the 501c6 is something we're going to need going forward, right? If you're going to spend the hotel motel tax mm -hmm. through an internal, through an through arm <laughs> source, now as opposed to a third party, party source. So either we're, way, we're, it has to be a 501c6. So. Yeah, it's got to be a 501c6. The question is, you go get a, thir a third party 501c6, or do you create one yourself? <clears throat> this would be creating one for going forward. But we, we need it in order to spend the hotel motel tax. Mm -hmm. I don't see why we should delay that. That has nothing to do with the 400 uh, I think we need to proceed with this because it's going to take a while to get that status. Even after you submit the paperwork, it will probably take you know, months. And why, why would we want to delay it if we've got to have it going forward? And with that, I just feel bad. Said we just want to get that stuff. I mean, that has nothing to do with the 399. Mm -hmm. So what are your thoughts? I'm just trying to... Commissioner Parkin is in the head line. Look, look. Yeah, I, th I think we should go ahead and at least get started with it because we don't know how long it's going to take. That's mm -hmm. just my position. Yeah. We, you know, it would it would at least give us a a pathway going forward to spend that. Mm -hmm. my, I do have a question. Though, since you you have the floor to me, mm -hmm. the um, the appointments for the board of directors for this. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah, so what's in there is, okay. is just proposed. Mm -hmm. That's what uh, I think the city of Carrollton uses. Mm -hmm. um, hold on a second. Let me I got it if you want me to read it. The, the initial board was uh, is going to be, uh, was going to, in this draft, is the chairman, the county administrator, and the finance director. But there's going to be seven board seats. Uh, the others will be filled, and we do have to modify this language about the stagger to get there because it's not clear whether the three are replaced by seven new members or the three mm -hmm. are, are added to by four, and that's when we need to get direction from okay. y'all. But the four would come by votes of this body as recommended by uh, the, the the entity, the 501C6. In other words, the county board commissioners appoint members to this body. So that language in the draft of the articles uh, of, the, of the bylaws is a little bit loose because okay. we need some direction from y'all as to what y'all want. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, so is it your intent to get with us before we proceed with this? Because whether we discuss it or vote on it, this needs to be. It needs to be cleaned yeah. up. We just need direction. Um, the reason why we, well, if we go forward this matter, <coughs> Uh, and I'll, let me just say this, if you decide not to use it, <coughs> you can incorporate something that stays a nullity until it's actually uh, uh, utilized. But our concern is how do you want people put on this board and, and where they come? But right now it reads this way. The board of directors shall be composed of seven voting members. Three of the seven members shall own or be employed by business in Douglas County hotel sector. Three of the seven shall own or be employed by business in Douglas County attraction sector. One of the seven members shall be a voting member at large. The initial board director shall be comprised of the chairman of the Douglas County Board of Commissioners, county administrator, and the director of finance. The Douglas County Board of Commissioners shall appoint directors to serve in place of the initial board directors, with the substitute directors having all the powers and authority conferred upon the initial board of directors. The Douglas County Board of Commissioners shall appoint four additional directors to satisfy the initial uh, remaining vacancies. So the three would remain, you add four to get seven. All appointments thereafter shall be made by the Douglas County Board of Commissioners with the recommendation of DCTT. 
But that's not science. So that's actually, based, if you look at section one, where it's talking about the seven, so once you get to that point, the initial board, which is what's proposed as me, the chairman of the finance director, would no longer be on the board. So that's what the numbers are going to add up because you got three have to be employed by a business in the county hotel sector. So three shall own or be employed by a business in Douglas County, that's six. And then one of the seven members shall be a voting member at large, so that's seven. And we agree, and that's why we need correction. Yeah. The, that, the section one and section two are inconsistent intentionally to show y'all what's out there and then tell us what you want. This has not been submitted to anybody other than y'all. Thank you for explaining that. Are you? Yeah. Okay. So we're still in this mindset. Well, basically, we just need to get started, get, get the application process moving forward. Is that what you're implying? Or? Well, yeah, but we need to decide on how this board is made up, right? If you decide you want Ken and the legal team to put together the corporate structure yeah, for non the board first, is that what you're saying? The you board would need to direct us. We've already. We need direction on the organizational how it would work. Structure. Okay. Structure. Okay. Structure. Yeah. Structure. That's right. Okay. Yeah. Okay. <coughs> okay. Questions? Yeah. yeah. That, that's why I was, I'm, I'm trying to be as sensitive <laughs> that we, we did not get how this has to play out, which is, okay, gosh, you can't. We, there's some material things that you need to decide on. Time is not against you. You, you guys know we can make a decision, but you need to be thoughtful about it. Now, you know what y'all are saying. So the question becomes, okay, so you got this tourism commission out there that's not attached to the current person that's running it in economic development. Like, okay, so what do y'all saying? If y'all set this in motion, you're going to ship all the money to this new entity? What happens to that commission? You have not thought through this. This is a real discussion which you're like, okay, guys, I'm going to so let this play out. And that's all I'm trying to, like, you, we're so focused on, we have spending money. Like, that's the least of our problems. There's plenty of professional mm -hmm. service firms out there that can take this without a heartbeat. The hard part is the structural part. This is a fundamental shift, and it's, to your point, this is something that you inherited, which is a law process uncovered. She's digging in the box like, what is this? And it turns out like, okay, oh my God, this is, a, this is not the cleanest thing. So we're trying, to multi we're trying to clean it all up so it's not being critical, but please understand what we're saying. You set that in motion. Why do you need that tourism commission? To be getting the, the percentage of money they got, if we're going to create this new entity. You got a staff member that's sitting over here on the economic development that's not tied to that person. So do y'all see what y'all, this spot, like, how y'all going to clean this up? Right? And that's the part where I want us to, I'm, I'm trying to suggest y'all think through this, and we're so focused on the spin that we haven't thought through the bigger picture, which is how are you going to be organizing, how are you going to organize this function? And that's my concern, that do y'all not see that train wreck coming? If you set this new entity in place, what that means for the existing structure that's out there on its own. I don't know none of these people. They're not my friends. This is business. I'm saying this is about the wreck. Because ain't nobody having that conversation that says, okay, now what if the board of commissioners shifts and said, now you are you going to put Colin up under this new group? And then now they get all the money. What happens to the other? Like, y'all thought through this. That's why I, I, when, you ask, when the county administrator asked me last week, I was like, Discussion on. Let my peers catch up on this, right? So this was that was my my, my suggestion was <coughs> y'all need to really think through this, and that was my only point. Now all these issues are tied to things that have just been out there. And I, uh, respectfully, and you always hear me say to my peers, y'all need to think through this. This wasn't the shotgun. The spend is easy. The spend is easy. Get this right. That's all I'm asking. Get this right. I yield. I know you got to go. Uh, Madam Chair, mm -hmm. so Commissioner Robinson, just yeah. So you. the History and Tourism Commission, which is essentially the museum, we have a yep. contract with the museum, right? So they get a portion of the tourism product development portion of the hotel motel tax. So does the uh, CAC. So the tourism product development, which is TPD, is totally separate. That can go to 501c3s. So the TCT, which is tourism conventions and trade shows, so that percentage then has to go to a 501c6. So they're two separate items. So as far as the money we're talking about for the TCT, that does not affect the uh, History and Tourism Commission, which is the museum. So it really doesn't affect them. But if, if the board decided to recalibrate, we're only required to spend by percentages based on categories. 
who you were within there, uh, to, what, what if the board decided to rethink it? Are we bound by that? You can't, well, as far as the percentages, they're required by state law. I say the percentages, but, but who gets that? Yeah, as long as it's a five, on the TCT right. portion, as long as it's a 501c6, that's right. up to the board. Hey, that was my point. So we're, we're, you're not bound by what's there. Just think through it. That's all I was asking. Do y'all understand? Now, that, that's it. We're going to answer the question. So again, if there's some implications, if the board decides to go in a different direction, then what's the status quo? Do you understand what that impact is? And it may not be take any action. But you're setting up a brand new entity, like, okay, so there's a, a finite funding source. Where's it going to come from? If everything is already 100%, that means you're going to take from something to fund this. That's like, have you thought through that? you 100% loaded already, but independent of the category, independent of the percentage, you're 100. You're creating a new entity with a new board. Like, okay, now how y'all gonna do this? <coughs> who, who, who gets the short end of that musical chair? And that's the part like, okay, think through this, guys. I'm not going any other way. I mean, no specific way. I just want y'all to be sensitive to, okay, I, I don't know how this is gonna play out. I'm just standing in my corner. But I, that's all I'm saying. I think you guys now see it. That's why I was suggesting. Make this discussion only. Y'all make sure y'all clear on what this is. And then again, you bring it back whenever y'all. I mean, we're good. Okay, Board of Commissioners, I was under the impression this item, and maybe I'm way out in the left field, that we're looking at something going forward, not the 399, we're focusing on this day, just going <coughs> forward. But if, if we need, uh, like we still need some additional massaging, uh, last year it sounds like you're not quite there yet. But they talking about the board members that I have no, I, I didn't, I haven't even taken that up. You're asking me to, to appoint board members. Who am I going to appoint? I'm not sure if the, the county attorney was going to take any board members. I think initially you were going to just use those three people that you talked about yeah, yourself. The, 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 the first story to get it off the ground, if, if and when it gets an activated, the, the, we we need to know if that's all right and going forward where do y'all want to be as far as appointments. But that, so that can be an article. And I articles think the only thing corporate articles of that's actually bylaws, excuse right. me, bylaws. And yes. the, re the only reason you need those three names so you can tee it off and get it stopped is that what I'm hearing? Well, here, here's the here's sort of the drill. Um, we could go with the three and amend the articles of the bylaws at any time. But what I find is that the board needs to set the direction and tone of what that looks like ahead of time, so that we write the words the right way. Okay. So you have an adequate amount of whatever control it is that you want for appointments. Once the train pulls out, the question is, have we gotten everybody covered as far as the power of appointment? Okay. So that's where we need direction. I can set it up with just the chairman and Mark and the finance director and just leave it run. But if you want to control appointments, the methodology of doing that's very important at the initial outstart. Okay. Sounds like we need just a little more time on this particular one. Okay, we will. It sounds like it needs to be very concrete. All right, we'll move on to the next item for authorization to approve change order number five and number six with the motor order solutions for the public safety P-25 radio systems uh, system and the chair to sign all related documents pending final legal review. Chief, yes, ma'am. Chief Spencer. Yes, ma'am. Uh, Two change orders. Uh, the first one, change order number five, uh, basically uh, the county gets credit of $9,500 for an early payment. That's added to the uh, $75,501.02 uh, that we got in change order number three. So all that's because we paid stuff early. Uh, Mr. Peacock did a good job in negotiating that. So. That's got us some, uh, some money there. Change order number five. We had an initial uh, credit, savings credit of $185,000. We've been spending that down on the different change orders that we've needed to uh, do to complete this project. Uh, the SHPO, the State Historical Preservation Office, the folks that are <coughs> Uh, helping us with our tower at Fairplay. <laughs> uh, in, in order to uh, 
satisfy what they are requiring, it's going to cost us uh, $54,250. That's for those 300 surveys that uh, will be done. And then the, uh, the other $18,000 uh, is for uh, moving the uh, Austell gas repeater, duplexer, new lines, coax, and all that on our tower. That is on their property. They didn't charge us anything for that. We're not charging them anything for this. So. Okay. Any questions from the board? Or? I think. Uh -huh. Commissioner so Mitchell. With all that being said, <laughs> where do we stay? <laughs> well, yeah, where are we? <laughs> Savings or, with, or break even or we came in budget? <laughs> we have $24,185.60. Uh, left on that uh, after doing everything on change order number six and $85,001 uh, on our credits to Motorola. Uh, so roughly about $100,000. And, and we're, in order to get everything that's needed, uh, we're, th those will go away when we spend that money. So that okay, so that $100,000 will go away with the 54 and... No, we have the credit now, but yeah, there... Yeah, credit now. But there are things that we have in the pipeline that we know we're going to spend that money down. Okay. So don't don't think don't that go you're going to have a pot of money at the end of the day. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Okay, so, so there's... You know, one time we was looking really great on the savings side of it, you know, coming in the way on the... And we still are. Yeah, we still are. Yeah, we, 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 but we had the ship, though. We didn't know about it. Well, I know, I know, I know a couple of situations where, but I guess I was trying to get to closer to the the bottom line possibility. We will be under budget by the end of the day. Yeah. How how much they do? Roughly. I, until, roughly. Yeah. I, I really don't know until, until we get all this done because okay. uh, they did a snag. You know, with for, for instance, if the uh, coverage mm -hmm. is not what is expected, mm -hmm. you know, you know, they're gonna have to. Fix that. They're going to have to fix that. That's right. their expense. But, but that's at their expense. Oh, okay. So, I was going to say, I thought that would be their expense. Uh, but like I said, we, until everything's said and done. Oh, I know. I know. And, and that's why I don't count on it. Right. Uh, I mean, you know, in the, but in the beginning, it was a nice, healthy savings that we were looking at in the beginning. And, and, and I will say this, that we're actually doing the, the uh, they call it subscriber training, uh, end user training, uh -huh. uh, started today. So we are very close to, to go to be live. Live. Yeah. So, so that's a good thing. And, and speaking of the live side of it, so I know we're going to get the full uh, live treatment until spring of next year. Um, but even when we go live with it between now and spring, will we still keep the other one? On mine to ensure we got connections, or once we turn it off, we've turned well, it off. We will not turn the old one off until we're assured that the new one is locking. So we'll be running both, you know, two ways. Right. Okay. What kind of effect would that have on the, the old radio systems that we have with both versus the new radios and stuff that they may or may not have? It, 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 you know, you got a, a megahertz, you know, what is that old one we're using this time around versus the, the old one? Yeah, what, well, we, we know for a fact that just a single tower in downtown Douglasville mm -hmm. will activate all the, the mock okay. alert stuff and all of our fire stations. Got it. So we know that, and that's just with one tower. Got it. We've got mm -hmm. eight other oh, towers right, right. that will be online. So we should be. What we should not have an issue at all. Okay. <coughs> that's what I'm doing to make sure you're not, I mean, just kind of how one would work with the other, even though the other one is outdated. And we're right. jumping on with Cobb and all these guys, kind of what kind of affect transitioning from one to the other, you know. But you'll have them both on. Yeah, but for until we make sure that the 800 system's gonna work, yeah. and then we'll, we'll transition over. Uh, and for the first month or so, we'll probably be working just off portable radios, Mr. the walkie talkies, and then we'll put the models in the trucks and in the stations, and then. Got it. Uh, so okay, so okay. we're excited, and we appreciate all the. <laughs> This is a nice little interesting journey, but it's, 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 it's been a long journey. Yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> yes, okay, I yield back. Okay, thank you. All right, we're going to move on to the next item. Uh, thank you so much, Chief. Thank you. And I'll be able to use what we got a presentation to do at yes. 2 o'clock. Yes, absolutely. Thank you. The last four. Um, 
loved our directive purchasing. Let's see how quickly he can. Just leave quick, it. Madam Chair. Number 19, we're not ready. Are you we're not still ready? in discussions with, uh, Gary's still in discussions <laughs> with the architect. Um, so, yes, that one needs to be removed from the agenda. Okay. So, so sorry, this is a discussion with the architect. Yeah. Okay. So, we're going to take this number 19 and we just won't put it on the agenda for tomorrow. Number 20, authorization to award a contract to Headley Construction Corporation for construction of the Lithia Springs Senior Center at a cost of $4,197,000 and to be funded by the 2016 SPLOS as recommended by Parks and Recreation Oversight Committee and authorize the chairman to sign all related documents. Director Peacock. Yes, ma'am. Uh-oh. <laughs> I'm ready. We advertised uh, the construction of the Senior Center uh, back in October. We received the uh, bids in. We received uh, six different proposals. Um, the the uh, lowest one was from Headley Construction for $4,197,000. There was a there was a evaluation committee that um, looked at these and uh, we are recommending, and it also was discussed with the uh, Parks and Rec Committee and a recommendation coming from that committee is that we award the construction of the Senior Center to Headley Construction Company. Again, for the low bid amount of $4,197,000. Okay, any questions from the board? Yeah, I, Dr. Chairman, and, and again, we recently passed a new procurement process, uh, well, policy. Uh, we're, we're trying to become more streamlined going forward. So I, I'd be curious to, to test our process, our evaluation process against our new policy. And I, um, I haven't looked at this. I'm, I'm, I'll, I'll yield my, um, if, if the chair of the procurement committee has an opinion, uh, but I guess this is not for the Parks and Rec Committee to have to even consider. It really has to do with um, our purchasing and just general administration. How did y'all handle that? Did y'all make it <coughs> conform to the new procurement policy that we recently had? You know, how, how did it test <coughs> out? Did you test it against that policy that we enacted? Well, if you well, have as far it, it's as the okay. DBE requirement? So what was the DBE requirement on these? Ten percent. That was ten percent. I'm sorry, no, it was fifteen percent. Fifteen percent, and and uh, they all all of them said that they would meet the fifteen percent DBE. And that's really as, as far as that new policy. That was really that's the only thing. that's really the only thing that would have anything to do with these because they're all over the two hundred fifty thousand dollar mark. Yeah, no. Okay. Okay. All right, we'll move on to the next commission. Uh, I do, I, I, I do want to acknowledge that you did do it because I'm looking at it. So I did want to. I appreciate that. You're yes, welcome. I'm, I'm looking at what they are putting on there right now. Yep. Yes. So thank you. It's on. It's on. So as far as that item goes, on the uh, that was the senior center, correct? Right. So total estimated cost. This is with construction design. The estimated part is the furnishing, so the furniture and stuff goes into four million seven hundred ninety-nine thousand five hundred dollars, and the budget estimate was five point three million. So that's about half a million dollars under budget. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Mark. But what we are, I'm oh, sorry. Mm -hmm. no, go ahead. You're probably going to say wrong. Uh, Madam Chair, but so we are getting the whole breakout. Is it in here now? It's in there. Okay, it's in okay, here. okay, all right. I just want to make sure that I didn't look at it, but I just want to make sure that. Yeah, yeah no, so I'll read it off Okay, cool. Good. Thank you. Okay. I have just one other thing. I want to make sure that we don't have as many change orders because what, what oftentimes happens is people come under, but then we have, we're have hit with all these change orders that then brings the price back up. So how can we, you know, So we try that? our best not to have them, but sometimes you have them, sometimes you don't. I mean, it's tough. You go out there turn. Yeah. But that's why we stress, I mean, not using that term in our meeting. Yeah. You, you know, but, but again, that's, and I'll leave the job. Yeah, but that way you know the numbers are the numbers. Anything outside of that yeah. number, it's on there. 
So. And is that the way we structure the contract, <clears throat> Attorney Bernard? I was trying <laughs> to, to my boy being seen there, right? <laughs> so, so. Well, um, Mark, an engineer from Georgia Tech, probably knows better than I do, but we did beat all this weekend in engineering school. But anyway, <laughs> <laughs> I, um, but Madam Carthon, I think it depends on what kind of contracts you want. Obviously, you know, um, whether you do a guaranteed maximum price and all these other things, it's going to depend on the words that are buried in four or five hundred pages of lawyer stuff. And so you can scope something out, but when you fly spec it, if it's not perfect, and it never never is, you're then going to have change orders, and that that's the problem. So, you know, it, when in building the construction, the schools back in the day, we use guaranteed maximum price on those major contracts, but it really requires expertise pre-contract and understanding your scope and spec specification down to how how many inches off the ground is the electric outlet or whatnot because when you move it six inches you hit a stud and suddenly you got this that and other so uh I, we are what we what we really want to do is provide as much safety net as possible knowing that there is no perfect contract that can't be interpreted by different people differently so i don't know that there's a direct answer to yourself i think the fact that watching it's important you also want to have a relationship with vendors over a period of time, hopefully, because if, they, if they're interested in you for the long haul, they tend to will want to have not as many change orders because they know we won't get the next deal potentially. And maybe part of the evaluation system is history. You know, what's the history? Mm, it's just some, it's a grading point. So the question that Bill and Dawn are experts on the but if you bid tabulations based on price, assuming you assuming it's a, a it's not a requirement, <coughs> you know if it's a if it's under the state law and it's a road project, you got to go with the guarantee the the whoever's the lowest bidder. So you have to prequal them very hard. So what is the criteria for prequalification? Not just have you done this work, but History, you know, this evaluation, what the committee decides to do, and the board and directing them, the committee to evaluate and pre qualification. But once they meet that threshold, they're in if they're the lowest number. Um, that's one way. But, Bill, I mean, the team probably knows better than I do. Mark, I know you know. We try our best not to have change orders. Um, just like on the next one that's coming up, dear late Kenneth, if my memory serves me correct, there's a, there's a rock clause in there for $88,000. You know, if we hit rock out there, it's possible we can pay additional funds, um, which would be a change order. Now, we'll do all we can to avoid the rock. There is rock out there, by the way, um, to avoid it, possibly do some, you know, some field changes in order to avoid it, to not pay them. And then there's other cases where we have change orders that are positive. I mean, they're positive for us, like the ones with the radio system. We're working off a positive right. change order with credit. Um, mm -hmm. Okay. It's a, yeah. I'll just say it. It's tough. I mean, the turnkeys are ideal, but the uh, the, un, the unforeseen, the unknowns. I mean, you, you'll get stuck with it. They start digging and trying to lay out the whole the foundation, and then they hit rock. So, do we? I mean, I think that happened with the uh, animal shelter. It rocked. Lots of yeah, and lots of rock. And we had to kind of dig to kind of even get the, 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 the sewer system kind of worked out. Mm -hmm. But we just had to dig in and say, hey, here we go. That's, that's, we, I mean, I don't think we can go back and charge mm -hmm. the company. You have to help me out. You can't charge them because uh, they didn't dig far enough to say when they did the testing, mm -hmm. the soil testing. And I don't know if they, this is feasible or not to say, you should have known that you knew the rock was there. So it's not for this fifty thousand dollars that you need now to kind of get through the rock situation. Yeah, it depends on how you get word the contract, but that would be considered unclassified excavation, which right. is not included. Right. See, Usually so not included because it's an unknown. It's, it's ideal. It, it's ideal, but I, I no, just say I just think about yeah. it because no, the I citizens think. are listening to us, and mm -hmm. so we want them to know that we are physically responsible for the mm -hmm. money because every time we get a change order, it affects something else within that. 
And for Parks and Recs, we already have such a small percentage. You're right. So That's why we try to we stretch it more. Stretch. Yes, 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 yes. You on that on that committee, you know that. And that that little bit of money we got, and we trying to you know bring up some other projects, right. you know, from the back end. But that's why we were always stated, do not take that money and you didn't make the last bit. Don't take that money now. I think we got to save it. Just go out there and spend it now and bring up other projects. Let's let's kind of get through this one because of the unforeseen stuff that could be. So, mm -hmm. but yes. Okay. Thank you. I, I don't know who's yelling, but I. You know. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, thank you. Okay. Number 21, we're going to move on to the next item, authorization to award a contract of integrated construction for construction of the Deer Lake Tennis Complex at a total cost of $887,337.42 to be funded through 2016 uh, splash funds as recommended by Parks and Recreation Oversight Committee and authorize the chairman to sign all related documents. Director Peacock. Yes, ma'am. Same process that we went through with the Senior Center. We issued an RFP. Uh, we received four responses back on October the 18th. Uh, they ranged from $885,000 up to $1,190,000. Uh, we are recommending the second lowest uh, proposal for $887,337.42 to integrated um, construction. Uh, even though they're not the low bidder, they were $2,000 higher than the low bidder. They have extensive experience in this type of construction, uh, and the low bidder did not provide us with any indication that they had any experience doing this type of work with tennis courts and the engineering that's required and different um, aspects of the project. Uh, and again, this was uh, discussed at length to the Parks and Recreation Oversight Committee, uh, and they are recommending that uh, integrated construction uh, be chosen for this project. Okay. Any questions from the board? I'm sure. Vice Chairman Robinson. Yeah, I, again, since this is Jerry Lincoln, it's something that obviously I've been following. Make sure that what y'all put out there is quality. <coughs> um, the animal shelter should not be the signature building of this major park for the county. Uh, we, we will, uh, well, you always have to still acknowledge history, that it, it makes sense to make decisions going forward. So I, I want you guys to, to fulfill that commitment that we made, to make sure that whatever you put out there is level, that you don't compromise um, in how y'all are approaching this. Um, and again, um, so I'm looking at, like, that animal show is just $5 million compared to the community center. Like, look at the comparison. So I'm looking at this, so I'm putting that to the side. So. Look at this um, million dollar um, tennis complex. And I'm hearing that we're discounting history. Now I understand why we would want to do the transportation center. I don't know, five million dollars, whatever the case, something that's big and something that has a lot of structural differences. But we're talking about a tennis court complex for the sake of conversation. Is this not an opportunity for somebody to, to, to begin to grow? I don't know the answer. I want to ask the committee, did y'all look at this? Um, could this, could the low person have got an opportunity to dig team. I don't know the questions that was asked, but I'm like, okay, so, but they had the lowest bid. They had the lowest bid. I'm assuming that they, they conform with the DBE. Uh, well, it does, yeah, I guess it's over the 250, so it conforms with, I'm sure you, the test has been done. So, why did the lowest bid not get it? The whole point is to get history. Uh, and giving opportunity. Again, this is not a major structure, which I know you could perhaps pause, but it's like sidewalks and tennis courts, like in the engineering world, well, how complex was it? So I, I don't know, it just makes me, mm. I'm gonna respect my peers, whatever you guys decide, I'll, I'll flow with. Then I at least get to ask the question, to keep it honest, did we, why did we discount that lowest bid? For the, it's, being, it's only a million bucks, it's less than a million. Why did whoever this is get an opportunity to participate and get something under their belt and get the experience um, um, versus, again, concentrating <coughs> on get history, but I'm always careful that you go to history, that becomes status quo. That means that there's no new newness. There's no new. Okay. This really wasn't based on history. This was based on the experience that sense. was given to us in record that was uh, submitted uh, we, uh, just as 
if we were looking for a, a plumber, we would go find the plumber with the most experience and that could would be in the best interest of the county. And that's what we did in this circumstance. We evaluated the documents and have chosen and are recommending to this board the firm that can provide the best benefit to the county. So I, I appreciate that. So I, and I'm assuming that the criteria in their um, experience was a, a quantified, you put a number on it. Yes, and yes, that, sir, we that, did. And that built up to some point. I'm, I'm keeping yes. it simple for the sake of the conversation. I don't want to make this long. Uh, but again, I'm just, if, if the committee, my peers, if y'all are comfortable <coughs> that the lowest bid should not get this, I'm going, I'm going with you guys. I'm just asking the question that wasn't in that room and don't want to get into it. And I it was discussed in the committee and the recommendation to go with the second highest bidder came out of the committee. So let me try to get you in. My peers want to weigh in on this. I'd love to hear y'all's opinion. I'm, I'm going to go with whatever comes out of it. So I was really looking for my peers to say something. But I yield. Okay. Okay. Also, um, I'm just looking. Um, it seems like you've already built in opportunity for demolition. If you run into rock, is that what? That demolition has about? already occurred. Okay. Uh, uh, with the old tennis court. I'm sorry. Um, yeah. Yes. The water. The answer is yes. So if you add up, if you add up everything, so this contract, which is eight eighty seven, eight hundred eighty seven thousand mm -hmm. dollars, plus the thirty thousand dollars for design that it cost, plus the fifty thousand for demolition that it cost, we've already done that. Your total is nine hundred sixty seven thousand three hundred thirty seven dollars, which is around seventy thousand dollars under budget. Yep. Okay. Which is real good. Give you a little. Opt-in if you get some more. Okay. All right, let's move on to the last but not least tab number 22, authorization to award a contract to Ray Lynn and Associates in preparation for the construction of the Boundary Waters Multipurpose Recreation Center at a cost of $7,001,920 and to be funded through 2016 SPLOS funds okay. as recommended by the Parks and Recreation Oversight Committee and authorized the chairman to sign all related documents. Director Peacock. Yes, ma'am. Same process as we've discussed in the last two RFPs were developed and uh, distributed to a large number of firms. We received five responses back. The low response was from Ray Lynn and Associates at $7,001,920. Uh, and they ranged up then from to a high of $8,170,000. We spent uh, several, uh, had several uh, uh, telephone meetings with Ray Lynn and Associates uh, due to the fact that their price, uh, <coughs> the next uh, lowest price was uh, $800,000 above theirs. Mm -hmm. uh, so we went back and had them review their proposal for completeness. Uh, we actually had them send it back to their, uh, uh, their evaluator estimator, I'm sorry, that estimates their projects to make sure that they had included everything and they've come back and assured us that they did. Um, their um, view of it is that they have a very, they include a very thin margin on this project because they want to do work in Douglas County. They also believe they have some uh, relationships with vendors and suppliers that allow them to pay less for the um, products or the materials that will be required to construct this um, uh, this location. Um, again, they've, they've given us insur assurances that uh, they're able to do this uh, at the price that they've uh, submitted um, and we thoroughly discussed it within the uh, Parks and Rec Committee uh, and the recommendation is to approve or to uh, to award the contract to Raylan and Associates for seven million one thousand nine hundred and twenty dollars. Okay, any questions from the board? Uh, sure. Yeah, I mean, again, I go back to not to exceed. We did that with the animal shelter. Uh, if in fact my, my my fellow peers have a concern, put 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 a condition. We, we even though you didn't do it in scoping. 
we still did that with the animal shelter as a board, as condition, we said not to exceed. And we were very serious about taking $5 million off that general fund. See, I'm, I'm showing you, I want you to put a condition on there. It was out of the general fund, we said not to exceed. It was non-negotiable, we like, yes, but see, with the SPLOS, we're being a little bit more loose, well, we got like, okay. Not that it mattered, but I'm saying that, well, just like that general fund, you didn't have the money. Like, okay, you're gonna burn $5 million out of the general fund. It was like not to exceed. It was a condition, but I'm okay if y'all wanna use the SPLOS and play with that, that's fine. But I just, but for those who didn't know, I wanna get that content. But I'm coming back to Ray Lynn, okay, I, I guess they, they have, quite success oh, since you brought it up. A lot of success over in the school board. They do a lot of work over there. So they're expanding over here to the county. I get the game. They're trying to open this up. They're taking a low bid, um, sort of get in here, smooth it out. We want to show you that we can be a partner to you. I mean, I, I get it. Um, and, and so I, um, okay. Um, you know, there's a concern. I, I, I get what they're doing. Um, and I, on this one, it's like, okay. Uh, they, they're acknowledging that they're taking it a, a razor thin margin on this. So, you know, look, we want your business. We want to show you that we're dedicated. It's easy to get my business, but can you keep my business? So, are they going to be able to fulfill what they say they're going to do? I don't know. I, I don't know their performance. I, mean, I, I don't know anything about them, um, perhaps, but what I perceive from afar. Um, I'm good. Whatever the committee thinks that it should be, if you want to leave it as is, I'm good. Um, to the full board, I'm, I'm fine. Okay. Mark, do you want to give the total? Yeah. Come Madam Chair, so construction, uh, which is what I'm going to give was $7,1920. The design was $340,000, bringing the total to $7,341,920 currently. Um, the budget was $8.4 million, so that's about a little over a million under budget. So if you add all three of those big projects up, the tennis court, senior center, and the multi-purpose recreation center uh, were about $1.6 million under budget. That's good. That's good. So, so to, to that point, and I, and I mentioned this in the earlier spots and to my, my peers, you got a savings. Mm -hmm. you, you're talking about all these unknowns and we don't know, you don't want to cap it. I'm going to highly recommend it. You don't go down and pull stuff from the bottom of that list and pull it forward. <laughs> 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 no, 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 no. We talked about that. Yeah. No, no. This, this is one of those. Hey, your call. Mm -hmm. But just like with that cash flow, it's about the cash flow. It's not that you can't get to the projects. It's like, can you count that don't blow the budget? I'm good on the project. I'm just like, as long as you know, now you've got the capacity to be able to relate to it on a monthly basis, it's just lining up. If it lines up, it lines up. I mean, but please don't talk about my intent. You know about like, okay, let me show you what, what how you fought. That it was flawed, that like, no, as long as y'all got the math right, just, just don't pull the schedule and forget the cash. That was my only point. So we talked about this morning, so this is not an indictment or a bad a conflict, it was like, I submit to you guys to figure this thing out. Just be sensitive, and that's all it was. But please, I want to clarify what my intent was. Like, as long as you got it right, mm -hmm. handle it. How you? Okay, thank you so much. I uh, appreciate all this. And uh, you're looking I, at I, No, no, I, I was going to say something, but I think he said enough. Yeah, I'm okay. I, I know yeah. this conversation has definitely okay. been refreshing today to hear the numbers coming in. Mm -hmm. I know everything will be intentional going forward. <clears throat> However, you know, we, we don't want to just, there's an elephant in the room, and we have two parks out there, which is Fair Play and Bill Off, and we've been talking about those parks, and uh, this group worked very, very hard to make sure that these numbers come in correctly so we can capture those parks. And I'm saying this for the public. And the goal was, uh, again, I worked in survey all my life, and all I know is to talk about that. When my patient went in, we wanted a success story. We didn't want you to come out uh, dead. We wanted you to be alive, and we did that. So today, I, I, I look at this as a success story. Um, again, we, we're not going to push. We're going to look at the money. We're going to throttle. We, we want to make sure we have some conditions built in. I agree with Commissioner Carthen. Those change orders eat up everything real quick. I like the idea of what you said, Vice Chairman Robinson, not to exceed, if we could put it on there, just not to exceed because then that places some parameters. I believe you all already, we've already bid it, not bid it out, but you've already got, what, what have we done for those two parts, Mark? Uh, Fair Play, which is uh, in District 4 and, and uh, Bill Arkin 3. Have you bid it out? What have you done? Do you have? Tell so me. we're in the process of evaluating and the bids, talking to the low bidder. 
um, to make sure that the bid's still good. It has to go back through Parks and Rec because Parks and Rec never, Parks and Rec Committee never approved those right. or made a recommendation on those. Um, so that's where we're at. And also, uh, Mr. Gable is rolling out the bellies, confirm the cash flow. So the cash flow works for okay. to proceed with those two okay. concession stands. Thank you. All right, uh, attorney, anything else from the board before I call for the executive session so y'all can get to the lunch? Um, attorney Bernard, do we have a motion to, do we have, do we need to go into executive session first of all? Madam Chair, we do need executive session for personnel and <laughs> real estate. <laughs> you see Commissioner Mitchell, I was, motion. I was Thank you. Board Commissioners, do we have a motion to go into executive session? Oh, okay, he's second. All in favor, please indicate by raising your right hand. 5-0. Thank you all so much for you all seeing you. Well, well, I got it. Thank you all so much. Any other discussion? Just wanted to remind you tomorrow we also have Douglas County Youth Commission that will be coming before the Board of Commissioners uh, tomorrow. We have this little exercise that will be presented to the Board of Commissioners tomorrow. So I just wanted you to be aware of that. Any other questions from the Board? No, ma'am. Concerns? With that being said, this meeting is adjourned. All right.